All right. The ground gives way. Oh, man. The ground gives way. Finally going to stream it. Uh, here we're on the home page. Um, the ground gives way. A coffee break roguelike with a simple interface, high replayability, high variation, and lots and lots of stuff. That's a, a good way to describe the game from the words of the developer, BTS. Um, it's really just got a lot of stuff and a simple interface. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun. I've um, I played a lot of The Ground Gives Way in its early days. Um, that was a long time ago. It's been in development for quite a while. Uh, I guess it, it was on development hiatus for, I guess, a couple years, and now it's picking up again. But really, that's been... it was The first version was released in, like, uh, 2014. And... Um, that's when I was playing it, when it was when it first came out. I was really interested in this game. Uh, even got in touch with the developer BTS, and we were emailing back and forth um, about the similarities between, for example, The Grand Gives Way and Cogmind, because uh, our two games, um, I've talked about it a bit on the stream before, uh, you know, roguelikes can kind of be divided into two categories, uh, one of which would be um, games more like the original Rogue, where your build kind of you rely on what you find and your build. You don't really have uh, character progression, as much character progression as you might have in another kind of RPG where you're selecting selecting classes and raising stats and whatnot. It's more about what you find in the dungeon and uh, you build around that. You kind of adapt. And that was the idea behind Cogmind as well. You're supposed to adapt um, so you don't have classes. And it's uh, a lot of it's up to what you find. And you can have a plan, but at the same time, uh, your strategy will revolve a lot about what you around what you find, and so that's what the ground gives way is about. There's a lot of variation, and like I said, a lot of stuff. You just find so you'll find you play forever, and you're still finding new stuff. <laughs> it's uh, pretty amazing. Uh, it does mean there's a lot of interactions and things you might not be familiar with, and there's a lot of things to to figure out. But it's also pretty simple and easy to get into. So anyway, I played it in the early days though, and even though it's one of my favorite roguelikes, I just haven't had enough time to get back into it. I mean, there's always new stuff coming out, um, and. <clears throat> <laughs> chat file in here. Where's TJ? Yeah. Oh yeah. Where's TJ? Also BTS, the developer was, uh, he'd like to be here today, but it's uh 2 AM where he is right now. So he said, he'll just have to check out the video later, uh, which is too bad. It'd be nice to have him on for the stream, but, um, uh, time zones. Yay. Anyway. So yeah, I played this game a lot when it first came out the first, uh, you know, the first four or five versions I was playing a lot and, uh, kind of sort of helped shape the game a bit since I was one of the earliest people giving feedback and also um and also kind of helped it get jump started by posting about it everywhere because a lot of people weren't familiar with this game it's brand new right so uh need and BTS wasn't doing any kind of advertising on his own and it seemed like it's a really good game at the time already so I decided needed uh, needed uh more people talking about it and playing it and since then though it's really grown a lot Oh man, in, in six years, <laughs> it's gotten all kinds of new mechanics and of course new content, always new content. And uh, some of the mechanics were also reworked. And I mean, having been this long, I also don't remember all the details about how to play it. Plus there's so much new stuff. So we're going to have to go through the tutorial to begin with uh, so that I can kind of uh, refresh my memory. And uh, I'm sure I'll die a lot. But the game has changed a lot since its early days where in the early days, the idea was not every run will be rentable. And uh, BTS was really big on that. He didn't care that uh care to make every run winnable i mean it's not, not not about not caring it's about it's the whole game was kind of meant to be you know kind of a, a jokey roguelike i mean the, the whole name itself the ground gives way or for some reason you're walking along and you're suddenly you find yourself down in this dungeon and want to get out and it's there's, there's a lot of jokes throughout it and uh, including the whole premise um of what you're going to get and bring back to the surface and stuff so the fact that you could just have runs that were not winnable uh, was not a big deal to him, uh, even though there were quite a few of those <laughs> back in the day. Uh, I hear now, it seems now that it's a lot different. You can streak wins now, which is a huge change. I mean, that would have been completely impossible in the earliest versions to streak wins because, uh, yeah, you were pretty much guaranteed death on most of your runs. But the idea that there's so much variability and uh, so much stuff in there, it just it's still fun to play. Um, I mean, as as a good roguelike should be, right? Even if you die, you should have enjoyed your time. Um, so, yeah. So, back to the idea of... Uh, let me see. What else is in here? Oh, so, I mean, there's all kinds of other new stuff. Uh, um, I guess there's different areas of the dungeon now, too, with different themes and, uh, like, a world map and stuff like that. Uh, at least I've seen that in screenshots and whatnot. I'm not too super familiar with that, but that certainly was not a thing back then. A lot of 
UI enhancements as well, even though the game is relatively easy to play. It's very, it requires very few keys, um, which is nice. Um, what else is there? Uh, so yeah, you're encouraged to build around what you find and your, your build is basically your items. Um, we're not going to be gaining experience and raising levels and whatnot. And so we'll, we'll be talking and looking at some of the other unique mechanics in the game as we get into it. Uh, so yeah, we're going to get started soon. Uh, TGGW didn't always have different dungeon archetypes. No, it didn't. Yeah, it was, that was added later. In fact, are they not branches? Is it still linear? I couldn't even tell from the way people are talking about it. Are there actual branches in this game or is it linear? Um, I couldn't tell. Uh, but there definitely weren't branches earlier on. I know that much. Um, you just go straight to the end and back. There is a branch. Ovectus says there is a branch. Okay. Uh, a branch, one singular. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's, it's certainly changed a lot. It used to be, which is why, I guess, also one reason why it, it's easier for your game to just end because as, as soon as you meet some kind of randomly generated, you know, procedurally generated situation, which uh, your, your build or even the game couldn't have created a way to pass it yet, uh, you, it, you're just going to die. Like I remember, yeah, in the early versions, like literally you could come up against like a giant pool of lava blocking your exit, but you never, there was no way to get past it at all because the game never generated any way past it earlier on. There was so many, the game never guaranteed ways to uh, get out of situations. It seems like that's less likely now. I mean, I know even back when I was playing and I suggested kind of toning that down a bit, um, BTS had already started removing some of those situations. But, uh, <laughs> all right. So, um, uh, I forgot what else I was going to say. Um, that's about all the interest. Oh, no, one other thing is we're going to be playing in ASCII because the Ground Gives Way has no tiles. There is no tile set. Uh, imagine imagine how popular this game could be with tiles. Um, man, put, add tiles to TGGW and throw it on Steam. Oh, uh, BTS, you could make a lot of money. <laughs> it's, uh, this is an amazing game, and uh, but it's obviously ASCII won't really cut it for most people. And uh, I personally, as um, my viewers will know, I, I love ASCII and I'm uh, going to enjoy playing it in ASCII. But if you want your game to be, you know, more widely played, I mean, not that that's a necessity, um, but um, and I know actually BTS was interested in doing a tile set one day. Um, he did express interest in uh, kind of building it in SDL so that at least people could mod in a tile set or make another one. And uh, that could happen one day still, I'm sure, uh, would be pretty awesome. So... What? Heavy risk? Yes, I don't mind ASCII, but it sometimes harms immersion for me when a capital G is shooting me. Harms immersion? Mm, I don't know. For me, it's kind of like even more immersive. <laughs> Although I think it works better in Cogmind. Uh, that was kind of the... I, I, I like how that works in Cogmind. How, you know, I mean, you can pretend it's the an actual computer-like interface um, for the whole thing. It's even more natural than, for example, a fantasy game in ASCII. So, anyway. Fight, yeah, <laughs> no fight. Okay, no fight. Only TGGW. Intro is done. Time to uh, start up the game here. Uh, okay, so I'm going to be running it through Commander. And one of the things about TGW is it is a console game, which means you can change its appearance. You can choose your font and color scheme. Uh, the default is just whatever your system is and it has normally a black background. We are going to be playing with another color scheme that I have not actually played with before. I used to just play in the default, but we are going to uh, play with um, this particular scheme. Start up. Here it is, the title screen. And so this is the, uh, this is at different players of uh, the ground gives way. Um, a lot of people play with the default, but also a lot of people, especially on the Discord, had started to switch up their fonts. And you can change the font and the color schemes, so uh, there's just an infinite number of possibilities out there. A lot of neat looking, uh, the ground gives way uh, screenshots. So this is the one I'm going to be starting with here. And you see, that is working okay on stream. Close that window and that one. Okay. We're, it is also keyboard only, clearly. We're going to, so let's see here. We've got, uh, let's look at the options. I like to do that. So you can see here, um, uh, the title screen has not been updated since the 2019. I guess that was when the game went on dev hiatus. Uh, but uh, I know BTS is, is still working on even more updates. Getting back to it. It's this baby, right? 
but um, here we go. Let's gonna check out. Let's check out the options real quick. Um, show monster distance. No message window auto run. Uh, that's right. You can auto run through quarters, which is always uh, convenient. Unseen color. Blinking sleep. One of the things that uh, is always nice about options menus um, when it hap when you've got that is uh, <laughs> a description for what everything does. Oh, why is this lowercase actually confirm disengage? Probably should be capitalized like the rest of these. Um, immersion mode. Like what does immersion mode do? I can turn it on. I can turn it off. But I don't know what it does. An options menu in a in a game should there should like we can use the space in the bottom or somewhere on here to show uh what these actual options mean it's always something that bugged me even in in triple a games is that uh, in the past i mean now of them now a lot of them are getting around that and well are approaching it pro appropriately but just don't tell you what the options do <laughs> it can be hard to figure it out from just uh, one or two words sometimes especially if you're not quite as familiar with the game which makes sense and well we won't get into that but anyway I miss BTS. He's still in the Discord server, Vectus. <laughs> Speaking of Discord server, uh, I added a bunch of commands to Nightbot. Um, and type that in there. Uh, check out the commands. There's also a TGGW command. Some commands for games. There is a link to the Ground Gives Way, thegroundgivesway.com. Pretty easy to find, of course, on Google. But And there's also a link to the Discord. If you want to go find... Uh, BTS, there he goes, Discord. Um, he's he was he's hangs out there now. He it took him forever to arrive. I told him when we first started up the Discord. I said, BTS, we've got Discord here. There's a bunch of bunch of ground gives way players. Let's um you know come on. Uh, they like hanging out with the dev, I'm sure. And uh, there's got a lot of devs on our server. He finally showed up like a year ago or so, and said he's gonna start working on the game again. Obviously, everyone is excited. Uh, okay, so immersion mode. Uh, all right, well I don't know what any of these do so. Uh, or that I want to change. So Z to cancel. We're going to go do the tutorial real quick. Sorry for those of you who are already familiar with how to play, but I need to get back into it. I'm trying to do this kind of, I've forgotten almost everything. So uh, it's not only do I have to do the tutorial, but it's also a good way to, I guess, record another video for BTS, who I know will be checking it out later to see how people interact with it when they're first starting out. Tutorial, oh my gosh, wait, what? Are these a lot of tutorials? What is all this? <laughs> oh my, oh, all right. Is this how it was originally? Are they, did it separate out into multiple tutorials? Because it didn't used to be like this. Um, hmm. Anyway, tutorial movement. You walk around in the wilderness for no particular reason whatsoever. Uh, the ground gives way, and you fall down in a dungeon-like structure. There you go. There's your intro. Being, <laughs> yes, tutorial stream. <laughs> uh, being an experienced adventurer, you figure that if you get to the bottom of the dungeon, you'll probably find some ancient artifact or similar that somehow magically will help you get back to the ground so you can continue your aimless wander in the wilderness. So as you can see, yes, not not uh, taking itself super seriously here. Without any better plan, you get to work. Use the arrow keys to move the ad around, walk it into uh, the one and read the instructions. Okay, so yeah, there is, the the intro does start there. All right, here we go. So, so it is just arrow keys for movement and there's literally like only a few other keys in the keyboard you actually need for this game. You can see our stats down the attributes there. Uh, attributes, um, all right. Uh, tutorial movement, walk around using, uh, obviously we're gonna get, okay, we're gonna get through this stuff pretty quickly. Okay, so you can skip, I see, the, the reason there was a list of topics there is because you can skip to other parts of the tutorial, I imagine. Uh, so one of the things that's great about The Grand Gives Way is it shows you, it constantly shows you a list over here of the features in the dungeon and what they look like. So, you know, for reference, same with monsters and items. It's always nice um, when games do that. So you don't have to spend a lot of time examining uh, stuff. All right, running. Here we go. Enter the quarter to the left. Press shift left to run through it. Okay, so it's shift and the arrow keys now. Didn't it used to be space bar? You can use the running options in the option at the start menu. Is that the space bar option, I imagine? Space bar is the, I think it was space bar that allows you to do that. Now it's shift left to confirm it. Check that out. Boom. That's always useful. Tutorial stream, right? See in 50 minutes. <laughs> All right. Um, tutorial doors. We'll be we'll be through this faster than that. Well, maybe not. It is a longer tutorial. In fact, I should mention now. I mean, part of the, um, as we go through the tutorial, I'll also be talking about other things anyway. But the one of the things about. Uh, 
the ground gives ways tutorial it really does a good job of introducing you to basic roguelike mechanics like traditional roguelike mechanics and um uh yeah in fact in the past when people are trying to get into some kind of ASCII road like i always recommend the ground gives way particularly because of its really nice tutorial all right so the plus yeah here we go plus is doors checking out the doors uh the stairs in the next room we find stairs leading to the next level stairs represented by yes and press a was that always a key a um all right stand on top and press a for uh act on them here Stairs down, activate. All right, here we go. Combat. Now, there are a lot of new mechanics, though, that I need to get on. Like, there's now there's, like, EP, whatever that is, energy points or something. I think that's to prevent you from being able to uh, use your inventory as freely as you could. That was a, kind of an issue when I was playing, is you could optimally swap things in and out of your inventory for free, basically. And, uh, all right, three training dummies. Walk into them and attack them. There we go. Let's go kill the training dummies. Attacking. You can see down there. Uh, nice messages in our log. Kill dummies. Dummies destroyed. One HP non-lethal. That's a new thing too. When I played, there was no non-lethal damage. There's now a, there's now like non-lethal, and you can kill things and that aren't that are on the ground or something like that. Dude, Vectus, this game was so much simpler in its earliest versions. There was a lot of stuff, but the but the mechanics were still uh, limited. There's a lot of items. Um, but yeah, there's this, this game has been completely redone. This is, uh, it's 2.0 now. And even before 2.0, a lot of the changes I didn't even play with either. So the game was very different. Um, I mean, still cool, I'm sure. But, uh, yeah, I followed development on the blog over the years. All right. Um, but, uh, I, yeah, I had, didn't, I just didn't actually play it. Um, I was just kind of keeping, uh, and of course I forgot most of it, but uh, it was always interesting seeing what kind of decisions BTS was making. And what he was addressing uh, with those decisions. All right, so you can press uh, into the menu, select messages and space to see recent messages. You can scroll through the window by pressing up and down. So we can go like here, go to messages. If you want to see all your old messages and page up, page down. Wait a minute. Page up. Page up only goes up by one line. Okay. <laughs> I guess it'd be kind of nice if up and down, uh, if you could use up and down here to just go up one line and page up, page down would actually go an entire page. But... All right, let's uh, get back to the main menu here. And that was the messages. Yeah, here we go. Training dummies. I don't need more training dummies. Oh, here we go. Time to use our shift key. Okay, in the next room, you'll find monsters that can move and attack. Oh, no. All right. Attack them until they are purple and harmless. Okay, purple. Monsters get purple now. All right, so the rat fails to use nibble. Okay, we're gonna. All right, we attack the weak rat. The weak rat is unconscious. Okay, so it's now purple because it's unconscious. All right, the weak rat wakes up. Oh, disengage from melee. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, you push past the weak rat. It's unconscious again. The weak rat. I keep trying to walk by it. It keeps waking up. <laughs> Just watch me die in the tutorial, right? All right, it's unconscious again. And then what? It's, uh, okay. So I guess it woke up because I tried to walk over it, which is kind of funny because it was in the doorway and preventing me from getting by. Uh, I guess it would make more sense the, if the rats didn't spawn right next to the doorway so that when the player walks through, you know, they don't accidentally get it stuck in the doorway and then keep doing that again and again. Kind of slows things down. Like in the pastel aesthetic, yeah, I, I, I spent a while actually. I, I'm, I love going through different fonts and colors myself, so I spent a while getting this set up with a, with a neat new uh, style. I like this too. Turn-based. Uh, okay, yes. Okay, thank you for that information. Good old Roblox. Oh, no, wait. It's another rat stuck here. Okay, I actually managed to push past it that time though. Hmm. Interesting. All right, let's uh, go down the stairs here. Resting and targeting. Uh, we get uh, healed up going down the next floor here. Health points in the attributes panel below the map. You can see the uh, attribute HP health points. Yes, if you're a zero, the game's over. No, I don't want to disengage from melee. That's annoying. Okay. Weak rats.
A lot of rats. Okay, a white regular rat. Oh no. Take opportunity on rat. Uh, okay, sure. Whatever. It's unconscious now. Does it wake up eventually or what? Or is that only when you uh, rest? Rest and recovery. Okay, they wanted to make sure that we got hurt before we got through here, right? The tutorial in this game kills a lot of people. Yeah, I remember, I know towards the end, at least, in the original version of the tutorial, which was shorter, I mean, with fewer mechanics, right? You would die towards the end often. All right, so it is uh, too bright to rest when you're sitting close to fluorescent fungus. Okay, so it's too bright indicated in the light, uh, by in light in the status panel. So yeah, you can have a whole list of status things in the bottom right corner there. And so if it's in light, you can't rest. Every time you rest, you will consume one food. So one of the things about uh, The Ground Gives Away, which I think is really interesting, it's very central to the gameplay, um, is the resting mechanic. Uh, you consume one food. So you have to get, you need your food to rest. It's not about, uh, you know, the, you're not going to starve to death. You will, without food, you will uh, die because your hit points will eventually be too low after fighting stuff. But you can see how much food. All right, so the cool thing about uh, this game's uh, food system, though, is that when you rest, okay, you heal up, but you also lose all of your temporary benefits that you might have gained while you were awake that session. Or while, since your last time you rested, you can get a lot of good temporary effects, but you can also get negative ones. Uh, so resting can rest the bad ones off, but it also rests off the good ones, and that makes for really, really interesting gameplay. You know, you kind of want to push yourself to not rest and not use up your food until you absolutely have to. Um, obviously, this makes things more and more dangerous. But uh, throughout that process, you also get more and more powerful uh, if you can avoid the negative status effects and gain positive status effects. So it's a really, really interesting gameplay mechanic. Um, and I think it's the only game that does that, uh, certainly the only game that does it like this uh, in terms of uh, all the mechanics. So if you can see, uh, in light, we have in light status in the bottom right. So if we go like here, uh, wait, how do we rest? I didn't actually read it. Um, <laughs> forget the button. Uh, no, that's here. It's it's too bright. Wait, it, is, it wasn't actually too bright when I read that. Oh, maybe it was. Um, uh, maybe it's actually going to tell us in here. No, that's targeting. Uh, I actually don't know how to rest. Is that done from the uh, the Z menu? Okay, there is, I wonder if there's a quicker key for that or no, probably not, doesn't need it. Here we go. So do you want to rest? No and yes. And camp in the top there. So the other thing is, all right, warnings and notifications, none. It'll probably warn you if you're gonna lose or gain some important stuff. So it's gonna show the changes too, which is always very useful in, in the ground gives way. They show you also when you're equipping stuff or when you're doing any other kinds of spells or effects, it's always gonna show you the direct impact on all of your stats, which is nice. Uh, TCGW didn't have light either. I don't think light prevented you from resting, Vectus, but I may be wrong on that. I don't remember that as a detail. Um, it certainly had... Uh, let me think. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, Vectus, Vectus, it did not. Ve there was no light mechanic in early uh, The Ground Gives Way. It, that was added, right, I think, up right after I had stopped playing. Um, there was no light mechanic early on. That's a new thing. In fact, there was no FOV at all. I mean, you could see everything, uh, everything in line of sight. I think now it's based on distance. Or, uh, so that was not a thing either. So yeah. All right. So um, did the ground used to give way for sure? <clears throat> Game is very good. Yes, Vectis. Um, you forgot. How could you forget? All right. Do you, know, do you want to rest? All right. So we're gonna rest here. You see our food go down by one hit points back up again. Oh, so the other interesting thing about resting that I recall is uh, interesting thing can happen while you're sleeping. So in addition to the status changes uh, that you have, that you have, uh, you also um, random events can happen <laughs> while you are asleep, which can be good or bad. Um, so that's just another way that the game kind of messes with you. It's an interesting events. That you just have to deal with. All right, so wait a minute. I forgot a targeting there. Uh, I didn't actually read this one. I gotta get them. Sorry, but I read. Nope, don't need to do that. Interact with the monster. You have to target it. Enter targeting mode with X, right? Um, choose a target with the arrow key as well in that mode, yes. Uh, try it out with the combat dungeon. All right, so here we go. 
Here, all right, targeting. Oh, and targeting mode now looks a little different than it used to. It's got this like box thing going on. All right, and so here we can look at see target on the right side. It gives us all the details. That's combat dummy. I accidentally hit it when I was running through the room wildly, and it now has two out of three hit points. Um, sees and here's you. Uh, it gives a lot of distance, uh, a lot of uh, details here. Distance to you is four. Can see you in light. Hears you from seven. Nice. All right. Um, and wow, well, you can even examine even more details. This this was not a thing back when I was playing. You could never actually examine details. You didn't know how many hit points the enemy had. Um, you might have had some other details, like some of its. Uh, there was not 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 anywhere near this detail though. That's pretty cool. Um, hmm. PRM would be permanent, permanent uh, status or stat type effects. CTX. I'm not quite sure what that means. I mean, I get. I mean, it's temporary, but I'm not sure what it stands for. Context, contextual, maybe. Um, all right. So yeah, anyway, you can look at all the details of enemies, which is going to be really useful for survival, I guess, especially when you encounter something for the first time, you have no idea what it can do. Uh, that, that's a big problem in, uh, in, a, in a number of roguelikes, um, especially in those that haven't been worked on for a while. So the first time you encounter something, you're not really even sure what it can do. And, uh, if the game doesn't provide you with detailed stats, you're going to, you might just die. <laughs> all right. So examine and we can press escape. X to examine, Z to get out, right? So mainly XZ. <laughs> oh, CTX is contextual, yeah? Okay, that just confirms there. Are you sure the old game you play was even TGW? It was um, a very different game. Um, we'll see. Uh, to be honest, I think at the time, I'm kind of vaguely remembering, I didn't really like the fact that it was going to get visual range, or at least I wasn't sure what the effects would be. If it was going to add the light mechanic was going to be added, it was going to be a massive impact on the game. And, and, and BTS recognized this, of course, and I'll even wrote a blog post about it. Um, but uh, I mean, in the end, uh, I'm sure that design wise, it, it made a lot of sense to go in that direction for other reasons too. Um, but yeah, I did, after that, I hadn't, I hadn't tried it. I always meant to, over the years, I, I meant to go back and want, I wanted to play it, and I actually even downloaded it one or two times, but just did, didn't find the time. And so I said, finally, okay, I'm going to stream The Ground Gives Way. And I said that like a year ago. And since then, though, because it's always been just there, uh, I haven't had a chance because I've been streaming Cogmind and other games in between Cogmind runs, uh, where the other games are a little bit more, uh, um, in a lot of cases, were being played for other reasons, like they just had a release or something. So... Um, hey, Net Control, welcome. Like the character set. Yeah, actually, all right. So while we're uh, on that topic, um, I, I mentioned earlier about TG, uh, being console game and, you know, you can change all your settings and stuff. Uh, I went through a bunch of my fonts and this, I ended up using a Proggy Small. This is a, a programmer font, one that I downloaded years ago and was when I was considering what to use for uh, my own programming environment. And ended up not using this one, but I still have it because I like the font a lot. And it turns out it's it's pretty cool at this size in playing and uh, playing the ground gives way. So I uh, went with uh, went with Proggy Small, and the color theme is called Dracula. It is a color, it's an iTerm colors theme, um, which I got and I found an imported version, right? Manually imported it into um, uh, Commander. Because uh, Commander doesn't have great support for color themes other than its own. It's kind of hard to add other ones. But um, yeah, but anyway, I'll, I'll give you the details back on the, uh, even more details back on the Discord, a heavy risk. But the, it's you can find that stuff online, the iTerm Colors Dracula uh, color scheme and the Proggy Small uh, programming font. These are available via the internet. All right, so anyway, it's a good idea to examine monsters. Don't worry if you don't understand everything yet. Taking the monster in the next room, press X again to examine it. Okay. Uh, X, yes, X. All right, it's checking out our stuff. Permanent, can't use doors. A deep sleeper. Hmm. In light, has a many bite, reach one square. Instant damage, one. Get all those other stats there, okay. The rat wakes up. Rat is uh, okay, I guess. Take an opportunity. Well, I guess we'll get that later. 
A to go through here. Items behind the next story. Find some items that you can pick up. When you get close to them, you can see what the items are on the right panel. Step on, step, uh, step on top of it and press space to pick up. All right, so on the right side here, oh wait. Ah, on the top right there, we can see we have leaf aloe leaves and uh, item. Wait, what is item? Hmm. Place to Tillaberry in the backpack. Uh, wonder why it said item, and not Tillaberry. Just you don't know what the item is, or what was up with that? Um. Oh uh, yeah, Net Control is asking where TGW is in, in the family tree. Yeah, I talked about it sort of in the beginning. It's kind of, um. Well, actually, I didn't get. I talked about uh, it's kind of part of. There's two categories of roguelikes, the ones that you, you develop uh, your character based on what you find, and there's more uh, the other group, which is more like RPGs. It, it falls into the category like Brogue, Cogmind, and the original Rogue, where you develop as you go based on just the items you find. Your, your build revolves around your items, and that's your progression for the most part. All right, so we now have a, a Teleberry, and we can press space here. What are those little flashes keep seeing um all right to see your items you can exit to your inventory this is done by entering the space uh entering the menu selecting inventory we can also press c to go straight to our inventory um as a shortcut and so we can see here and examine our whole inventory it gives us a little details on the right there Teleberry is an instant teleport instant heal what a I uh, wonder what those numbers are in the brackets there. Is that a new, uh, is that from the e EP thing or something like that? Find out before long, I guess. Don't know what, there's a lot of uh, stats going on. Using items. First enter the inventory, yes, yes. Quicker way to access your inventory, just press C, right. ZXC, we're, we're playing ZXC here. So here we have a, a, a leaf owl, instant heal. We're not even damaged. We can teleport, space, space to consume. Boom, we teleported right next to where we were standing originally. Yes. The perfect kind of teleport. We're going to go down the stairs. And equipment. Oh, this is a bug. All right, we're going to try not to die in the tutorial. I love Brogue. Yeah, Brogue. Bro yeah, you'll, if you like Brogue, TGW is also, it's just a lot more stuff than Brogue. Brogue is... Rogue is neat about uh, the way it works, and uh, but uh, if you, the thing about TGW is just so much stuff, so many items, different items to discover, items and enemies. Whereas Rogue is a lot more limited, so you kind of have a more uh, a more predictable space of things to work with. So we can look at our bug here. Bug is unconscious, and we're just going to keep waking it up as we try to move past. Yeah, sure, opportunity, whatever. Move past you. Attacks of opportunity. Finally, we're going to, to learn about these. This was not a thing when I was playing either. When fighting a monster, you may get the question, take opportunity on the bug. This prompt comes up if the monster tries to flee from you, in which case you get a free chance to attack. All right, yeah. So it's kind of like, I think back when I was playing, that happened to you, but you couldn't do it to them. When you're trying to run from an enemy, they can attack you for free. Um, now there's a lot of confirmations about this stuff. In some circumstances you, may, circumstances, you may not want to, which is why you get the question. Similarly, if you try to disengage from a monster and fight, you will be asked if you want to leave melee. Uh, if you do, the monster will get an attack for opportunity against you. Nice. Plus one to die in tutorial. <laughs> no. All right, so now we know about attacks of opportunity. And... Um, Spear. Ah, I see the spear now. Goblin spear. All right, so uh, I can uh, pick up this spear. Place a goblin spear in the backpack. And now we're using a, a spear here. <sighs> goblin spear is surprisingly easy to use. Made from a weird material. It is sharp and may not be wielded while meditating. That meditating is a new thing I've never heard of either. Um, that is apparently a new thing you can do in uh, TGW. It can be upgraded by a specialist. It can be coded for extra effects against living monsters. Okay, uh, forward into weapons. You just found a weapon. Weapons can be equipped to improve your character. Go to the inventory and select spear. You see the item window in the right. How equipping screw will affect your attributes. Oh, you know what? I didn't actually read that. We should check out our attribute changes here. As you can see, the spear improves your damage and your melee, making it easier to kill monsters. Uh, well, I should actually go look at that here. Right here. Okay, so 10% uh, 
We got a 10%, a plus 10%. Originally, our melee stat was 70, I guess. Damage 2, reach 1. So, actually, space to unequip. All right, here we go. Um, sorry. So, you can see here on the right, now I'm looking at the actual stats. If you're looking in our uh, backpack here at the spear, it shows uh, on the right there, uh, current to equip, and it shows the changes that are going uh, to happen. That's why, I guess that's because we're using fists. That's why we're just knocking everything out. We're not actually killing anything. Uh, but once you have a weapon, you can actually kill stuff. So we will gain closed melee and lose dual wield because the spear is going to be uh, two-handed. Mm, no, it doesn't look like that, but anyway. All right. Oops, don't need that. Okay, yes. We now have seen our stat changes. Equipping in order to... Uh, oh, wait. I didn't... Yeah, I already did that. Okay, we killed a bug, died fast. This one is blocking. Equip the buckler in the same way as you equip the spear. This will increase your block attribute. Okay, block attribute gives you a chance to block an incoming attack completely. All right, let's pick this, pick this up. What is that? It kind of looks weird when, is that just an, a, an effect because we did something and it wanted to show it on the screen or something? There's, it always feels weird when you, like when we pick something up, there's a, the flashes of ASCII on you. That's kind of weird. Um, all right, we have a buckler here. As you can see here, it's going to actually lower our max MP, which is interesting. MP is uh, what you use for uh, magic and spells and scrolls and stuff like that. Or not scrolls, spells and stuff like that and wands too. No, wands actually have their own, but anyway, we get some block from it, 15% spells minus 10%. Our spell, or we lose spell resistance when you use one of these too. Hmm. Gain shield pummel. On equip instant fatigue one. All right, that was our, our EP just went down when we did that. So I guess, yeah, EP, it, whatever that stands for, it also has to do with our, that's our, our fatigue meter, basically. Like energy points, I guess. I wonder if it comes, I wonder how that comes back, actually. Is that something else that comes back on sleep or what? All right, so... Nice visual effects. Shield's famously non-magical. <laughs> EP is your fatigue, yeah. And it does come back on sleep. It doesn't come back without sleep, though? That's kind of crazy. It's certainly different from before, anyway. I mean, before it even existed. All right, let's uh, continue on here. Armor uh, decreases damage taken from monsters by a percentage. Um, okay, that's just outright telling us what armor does. There. Oh, well, here we go. Leather armor. And you can pick that up, place it in the backpack, and equip it. Actually, let's probably look at his stats, but anyway, it just says armor, 15%. All right, so that's outright removes uh, or some damage there. Let's continue on. Nope, can't check that. All right, lava. I guess we don't want to step in the lava. Is this going to ask us if we want to step in the lava? Okay. Interesting. Oh, so yeah, that is an animation effect. This was added. It's, it's kind of annoying, I think, the way that appears. Just a personal preference. Maybe you can turn it off. But, um... It's, it's just, there were a bunch of question marks kind of flashed out. Uh, anyway, we don't want to move over the lava though. I was just testing the game. See if it would let us do that. <laughs> oh, whoa, knocked back. You pummeled the bug. Wow, we just knocked him back. That was, uh, that was nice. Just kill everybody in the doorway here. Boom, knocked him back again. There was an animation there. Did you see that? Down we go. Combat two. And... Combat. When your uh, status pane will show the word combat. Okay. When you're in combat, you cannot rest or run. All right. What's on this other side? Blade. Uh, the short sword. Oh, it said blade. Oh, so this is what happened before. Apparently, that's that's a new thing. Uh, you can't actually tell what a items what a specific item is until you get close enough or have enough view of it or was that because it was i guess outside of our regular sight range area interesting that's actually really cool i can see that being awesome for example um like in a big room where there's items out there and uh 
Uh, you brought this nerf upon yourself. What? It's stopping from I know, I know, exactly. That's what I was thinking of, but I'm surprised it doesn't come back. Oh, no, actually, you didn't rest in it. Okay, oh, then run. It's because we went down a floor. Yeah, I know we brought it. It doesn't regenerate naturally to defeat the point. Uh, no, it wouldn't defeat the point, actually, though, because you could even do it during combat before um, or right before and after or just don't engage directly. And it was so... It would make some sense uh, to allow EP to regenerate slowly. But, I mean, I'm not... I'm not saying it, it doesn't make sense for a time to, but. Okay, so yeah, apparently you have to, you get close to ID things. So that was, that's a new mechanic. That, that's cool. I like that in, uh, doing that in Cogmind with, um, I mean, that's part of why prototypes exist. And also part of why uh, things like, that's one of the reasons I've talked about, I like scrap, is because you can see something that you know could be valuable to you in the distance, but you don't know whether it's worth actually going to get it in a situation where it's not a free choice. Um, so like in TGW, you might see some enemies guarding this this blade, and you you need you, you like blades, right? But you don't know exactly whether it'd be worth it or not. Um, it could be, it might not be. It's kind of uh, adds some suspense to the game. All right, so we have a short sword. Is that actually better? So you can see in our stat comparisons over there. Um, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Where's my? Oh, did did they take my garblin spear and everything? They took all my stuff. <laughs> Uh, I guess we did totally reset on the new tutorial. I thought we were keeping the same stuff going down through the floors. <laughs> they took away our, our spear and our shield. So now we're going to get a, a, got a new blade now. All right, you can press space to wait one turn. All right, I did that actually a couple times before I just kind of guessed. And uh, yeah, that's the way that works. Because basically this game really just does use a few keys. So if you're not sure what key it is, just press one of those few keys. <laughs> um, this way you can get the first hit. Space, 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 space. Wait, what? No, he didn't see me yet. Bring it on, rat. Weak rat. Leaf aloe. Uh, okay, I guess we're done with this side. <laughs> Easter tutorials in your game? Yeah. Um, back to the other side then. What's over here? Closing doors. You can close. Oh, uh, yeah, this was an interesting thing. Um, there was, I remember there was a lot of discussion around this in early Grand Gives Way development, how to close doors. You can close doors by walking into a wall adjacent to them. I think this is a pretty neat mechanic because it turns out there's some doors that you can't close or you, in the past, at least when it was first implemented, there were some doors you could never close, um, due to their orientation, um, which is kind of funny, but closing all three doors and then go to the corner to the left. All right. So close door. So you can just move into the, uh. There, the wall next to it. <laughs> hey, GJ. 3 a.m. TGW. Yes, it would be for also BTS, who sadly uh, can't make it to the time zones. Plus, we're still doing the tutorial, but we're talking through it and about other stuff anyway to so make it more bearable, right? <clears throat> um, Many monsters cannot open doors. So you can see for monsters unable to use doors by examining it. It's often wise to close doors to prevent monsters from attacking you. Yeah, all right, I get the idea. Wait, there's a monster in here. Oh, guard dog. Whoa, whoa, what? Are they, they're barking. Look at that. They're using bark to wake everyone up, I guess. There's, like, there's more animations uh, that have been added to the game. That's for sure. So if we look here, we can examine them, and they can't use doors. So we can just step aside here and close that door you can hear but you can see exclamation marks in the side look at that there's the dogs in there barking away <laughs> and we have your apple 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 and i'm gonna ignore the other rooms because i know what they are okay ranged combat excellent <laughs> danny you tried pulling sleep last year and gave up Yes, I am basically learning a new game right now, exactly, because uh, I, I remember only vague things, or the, the big the big uh, things. All right, so, and plus, so many things have changed. If you equip some rocks, you're able to attack monsters from a short distance. If you happen to find a sling, you can attack monsters even further away. Okay, where are we? Here we go. Rocks, and all right, we can throw some rocks. You can see they're in our inventory here. Rocks, do I, I have to equip them here. Let's, let's equip, they're in our ammo slot now. Three rocks. A set of rocks can be used to throw out monsters. They work even better with a sling. You can upgrade them with a specialist. 
you add nine rocks to your ammo. It automatically animated that and picked them up. And this here is a mech, oh, it was mechanism. Um, and uh, now we know a mechanism is a, is a, a sling is a type of mechanism. So we can now equip our sling on our fire uh, shot down there. A range of two, it's not much range. Wait, what? Increases your range and makes you much more accurate. Oh, never mind. I think they combine. Probably it's two plus three. Yeah, that just confirms here. Range is additive between range and ammo. Yeah, that was always the case, I guess, before I had forgotten that mechanic. Makes sense. All right, let's check this out. Range combat makes you have rocks equipped and sling, and this sling helps too. Shoot a monster, either enter targeting mode and select the monster you want to shoot with the arrow keys and press space. If you can shoot a monster, the target crystal will change color. Can't shoot if you're adjacent to it or too far away. All right, let's shoot something. Ring it on, bugs. Um, X. Distance, 9. Your missile range, 5. Right, 2 plus 3. Okay, so we can... Uh... All right, so here, distance is 4, so we can now press space to shoot. Space to shoot. Space, space. Do we have... Oh, now they're, they're all running away. <laughs> How do we still have rocks? Did I use all my rocks? One rock left. I didn't realize I had that many. All right, was there nothing else on the side of that room? Nope. Range combat, your missile attribute. Uh, determines your chance to hit a monster with your ranged attack. Note that your missile weapons have a maximum range. Yes. Pressing Z to see your character attributes. Right. So we can check out at the bottom, we have missile 15%. We can check up here uh, all of our stats, uh, the details under missile there show our current max range. Five ammo is only one left. <laughs> Makes sense. Things Gibbs Roddy famously says, so they don't make sense. <laughs> Uh, they totally make sense in some version of making sense. Oh, more rocks for us. Yay. Uh, it was adding those automatically, of course. Got to start using some shift running. Shift run ourselves into the lava there. Okay, down to the next floor. Potions! We're getting through it, guys. We are... We're... Uh, Mostly through the tutorial. Potions, give me potions. Two potions of the same kind. We don't identify them. There's a star next to these. Why do these have a star next to them? I guess it's because they're unidentified. You can identify it by pressing X. Wait, what? Two poison paint. Poison paint is uh, coated on a weapon, right? Okay, so okay, so this we can use this to coat with, huh? I think uh, there. Were, I don't recall this having a thing. Separate coatings. I know you could coat things, but you coated them using regular potions. You realize two battle potions. This potion makes you a war machine. Okay, right. We are currently a war machine without a weapon. You just have some potions. If you examine the potions in your inventory, you will see that you don't know what effect they have. You can drink. Why did? Let me do that though. You can drink a potion anyway for purposing space. This is at your own risk over potion made available. Okay. Is it only for the tutorial that we did that? Um, examine the two potions carefully. You are fatigued. Oh, never mind. There's the cost. So you can actually decide to spend your EP to uh, examine potions and identify them for you without using them. Uh, or you can just use them blindly um, and not expend the EP, I guess, which is nice. Um, yeah, Danny, the dev did recently, BTS uh, did get back into developing. He's planning on releasing some more versions. But it's extremely complete, and there's so much stuff. E EP is a super cool resource. Yeah, that's neat. I like that. I, I, using EP to uh, identify things is kind of cool. That's That definitely didn't exist before. When you try to potion, that kind of potion will be known for the rest of the game. Yes. Yeah, right. Teaching us space. This, that's just the one example I was talking about, how uh, this... 
tutorial in the ground gives way can teach you a lot of basics about roguelikes turn-based and uh, like identification system and stuff like that but it's obviously kind of branched out a bit on its own but there is a safer way of identifying potions than to drink them yes we did that uh here it is now it's telling us so it reduces it fatigues you takes some effort reduces your ep try it with the potion you find in the room to your right you replenish ep by resting all right another potion here let's identify this one um seizure poison okay A short sword for us, so we can coat our short sword now. Is it going to tell us to coat it? Yes, coating weapons. All right, go to the inventory, coat weapon. All right, first, I guess we want to do that. Uh, press C to coat weapon. Uh, so we can uh, really coat your weapon. It's kind of weird how it switches back to the main screen to do that but I guess it might have something to do with the number of windows that are showing. But anyway, so we can look at our, we have a uh, short sword here. Um, it can be coated for extra effects. Wait, where, where's the coating info? Oh, there it is, on hit, coat. It has a coat over there and a temp effect of poison two. So it's listed under there. And so now uh, you coat your short sword with poison paint, here we go. It's gonna die anyway, but. <laughs> <laughs> the bug gains poison. We did see it gain poison. Not that it had mattered. Uh, I wonder how long... Oh, wait. I guess that lasts until you rest then, as a temporary effect. Even So even the coats on your weapons last until you rest. It's another example of uh, temporary effects. Because in the past, I had never actually have used coating before. That was added shortly before I stopped playing. All right. What are these guys? Oh wait, forgot to check the right. Wooden barrels. Okay. Mm. Mm Nightleaf, piece of bread, placed a potion. Got ourselves a potion here. Lesser healing potion. Okay. Coat. Uh, it also said 2 EP off to the side of the entry you picked to ID. Hmm. The clock of TGW's all rests. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty cool. I was talking about earlier. Magic wand. Yes. All right, let's do it. Um, wands. Wands are used to cast spells, and they're found. They're unidentified. You can identify them by pressing X. Ah, uh, nice. Wands are more complicated than potions, so identifying them will fatigue you more. Uh-oh. Unlike potions, one cannot be used at all. Until this has been identified. When one has been identified, it will reveal which spell it contains. So you have to use EP pretty much, or maybe some other method, but uh, what's the cost here? The cost is there on the right side. There it is. Prex X to identify is on the right side. It does tell us how much EP is required. Let us uh, identify it. It is a magic missile, one MP. Switch magical missile. It won't stack similar items, and it does. Um, one damage. Casting spell to cast a spell. Um, then press one. Hmm. I guess I should, I'm supposed to use it on a dummy here. Oh, there it is, because it's on the list there. Zero, one, okay. Magic missile. Combat dummy is damaged. Yes, okay, gotcha. And notice our MP did drop by one. No, we're not going to move over the lava. A lot of random stuff you can pick up here. Not that we need it right now. Technically, we can look at stats and stuff, but... Magic wand... Aiming. Some spells can only be cast at yourself. Some spells can only be used once, and then you have to rest before using it again. The property of the spell is displayed in the item panel. It is identified. All right. So right now we have um, only three EP. So we actually can't identify this magic wand. It will tell us you are too fatigued. Kind of interesting how that pops up now. And flashes. Kind of goes by pretty quickly. Um, hmm. All right. Uh, let's see. So, 
We do have food though, so we can go to the rest menu. It says here, uh, warnings, notifications. You have full HP. Oh, that's interesting. So it does warn you if you have full hit points. Um, nice little reminders here that maybe you don't want to rest uh, because you're going to waste your hit points, right? Your piece of bread may go bad. Your fermented apple may go bad. Hmm. So that's right. You can actually, if, uh, let me see, you have a piece of bread here. It can be upgraded by specialist food. It gives us, oh, wait, energy. Instant energy three. Does that mean it restores our EP? Food one, give us food. Let's pray, let's eat our piece of bread here. Uh, it did, oh. I hmm. Instant energy. One thing I'm wondering, uh, why is energy capitalized here in confusion lowercase? It has me wondering what the difference is. Is it because energy is an attribute? Magic points capitalized. Heal. Uh, hmm. Anyway. Just things you wonder about. Um, yeah, okay, bro, we were talking about it earlier. Um, you eat food to gain your food, and then you, uh, you rest and it consumes food. And that resets. That's one of the most interesting and central mechanics of uh, The Ground Gives Way. And that is uh, it will reset all of your temporary effects. It heals you to full and resets all temporary effects, both good and bad. So you kind of want to push yourself to not rest too much. But obviously that also risks um, gaining more and more negative effects too. So it's very cool. Uh, it's an excellent mechanic. So, um, all right. So yeah, anyway, we got back some of our EP. So we can go back here and check. Um, so it is, I guess EP has nothing to do with combat, really. It's all about the outside combat, which is kind of interesting. Fatigue and roguelikes as a mechanic is normally about um, uh, combat. Uh, whereas so far, it seems like it might always be outside combat, which is pretty interesting. Uh, okay, so we got here, we get, what? Accuracy ritual? <laughs> we have a, a, a wand of... Accuracy ritual can be used once per day. So a uh, day generally refers to basically when you uh, rest, that's a day. Um, so that's what it was referring to in the last help there is that you can only use it uh, once uh, before you rest. Um, got an effect list here. And that would give us, right, improve our melee and all that stuff. So and that would take more uh, MP. So what we can do is uh, just to... Cast that right away. And now, if we look at uh, our list here, no. We did cast it, yes. All right, you can see up there, though, we can, our attribute is, it gives us base, permanent mods, we've got uh, equipped mods. We've got plus two MP from one of the things we have equipped. We have the, now the temporary mods and the TMP that is, comes from the spell that we had just cast. Still using a fist though, but I just have wands, that's okay. All right. So we have a nice convenient list of all of our, uh, I'm not actually gonna be do that very much because we're running out of MP. Oh, we still have one more MP left. Actually, wait, what's this? Casting spells, if you have more than one identified one, you can select which one to use by pressing number one to nine, indicating the target panel. An alternative way of casting spells, selecting a wand in inventory and pressing space. So you can either examine, all right, there's two different ways, okay. Nope, no, 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 we're lava. The bug wakes up. I'm gonna have trouble killing things, aren't I? Avoiding spells. Some monsters can also use magic. You have a chance equal to five times max MP to avoid a spell. So your MP is actually your spell resistance as well at your max MP. Um, so magical characters who are, are using magic a lot or focus kind of on a magic type build will also be more resistant to it and obviously have to worry more about physical stuff. Monsters have the same chance to avoid yours. Uh, to see your chance to avoid spells, press Z and look at the bottom of your Character panel, R spell for spell resistance, R spell. Max MP seven times 5% is 35%. Ooh, who's this guy? Oh, a yellow fungus.
frail. It's frail and died. I guess that means uh, you can kill it even though we don't have a... Uh, we didn't have lethal damage. Yeah, as uh, GJ is talking about in the chat here, uh, the ground gives way. It's a bit more unforgiving, so you just burn through the said con consumables. <laughs> Busted ritual? Is that a really good ritual? Um, uh, yeah, the, it's neat in the ground gives way. It really encourages you to use your use your stuff rather than hoarding. I am. It's um, going to be a more effective way to win. All right, so we got vision. Your vision is attribute seen in the attributes panel below the map. You can see down there we got three right now. Determines how many scores you can see. A candle. All right. Place the candle in your backpack. Oh. All right, we're in a big room. I. Standing near a light source, such as luminescent fungus, will cause you to be in light. When you're in light, you cannot rest and monsters can always see you. You can also see monsters outside your range of vision if they are in if they are in light. Alright, so this is apparently a, a alright, this this is a grate right here, or a wall we can see through, and so we can see the monster all the way to the north because they are next to some fungus. And or it's a, it's a lit wall. Wait, I'm not looking. Oh, arrow slit. Okay, it's an arrow slit. Why is the one to the east also lit? But anyway, you can see how this is a good description of or, or a way to see uh, how vision works here. Is there anything else in the north that we have to look at for the tutorial, I wonder? No, okay, never mind. It's just uh, showing us that we can see through the wall here. All right, through to the next area then, stealth and noise. Mm. So I have, it's kind of funny I'm doing the tutorial now because technically I have one the ground gives way a couple times before, back when it was um, crazy hard and also um, mechanics were slightly different. But noise was always really powerful and effective. I mean, if you can lower your noise, you could walk by literally anything in the game and they wouldn't notice you. If you can lower it all the way to zero or whatever, the number is the distance at which uh, people will hear and notice you. I've got a short sword here. Sure, I guess we'll attach that. Noise determines how many squares monsters can hear you. Monsters also make noise. If you hear a noisy monster, it will blink with an exclamation mark. Behind the next door, you will hear some monsters. Attach your short sword. Oh, did I say attach? <laughs> yes, I will always say attach now. <laughs> there we go. We can see some exclamation marks to the west here. It's noisy monsters. Behind the door. And these are some wild dogs. Got our sword here. Gonna just walk through and chop these guys apart. Whoops, no, I don't wanna move that way. He's trying to kill it. Wait, oh, he's running away. Okay, goodbye. Ah, velvet robe. That's gonna lower our noise. Um, you can see here on the right, lowers our noise by two. And also thievery goes up. One thing I'm not quite getting, why does the game have to switch back to the map when you're trying to attach some, when, sorry, I'm gonna say attach again. <laughs> when you're trying to equip something, every time you equip something, it flashes back to the map. I mean, you can't actually see what's, what's happening on the map at all, it's just it's just annoying. It should just go straight to your equipment list. Now, I mean, I'm wondering if something, is it because it has to animate something really quick or is there some other reason? I mean, yeah, if there's an animation though, it's, it's gonna be gone in a blink of an eye anyway, so what does that even mean? I mean, it makes sense, I think, if you can constantly see the map, you know, your equipment, like in Cogmine, for example, the equipment list is out to the next of the map, and you can always see it as you're equipping and equip unequipping things, but otherwise, it's just, it just seems excessive. All right, a, a rogue ring. Oh, here we go. We're going to get some lower and lower uh, noise attribute here. This one, uh, rogue ring, shh, is the description. It cannot be enchanted, but it does lower your noise by another two. And also we have a torch, but the flame makes you vulnerable. So as you can see here, we, if we equip this, it will raise our vision. Um, but uh, it also, wait, what? It raises your thievery to have a torch. That's interesting. Hmm. But it increases your vision. 
It emits light. Sleep. Most monsters sleep. If they haven't heard you, they will wake up only if you walk within noise squares from them. You can see that a monster is asleep when a Z is blinking over them. If it turns to a red Z, you're one step from waking them up. Oh, that's a cool, all right, that's a cool uh, QOL, uh, piece of QOL info there. I didn't have that before. Stealth, equip uh, the robe and the ring to try to get through the next room without waking any monsters, right? So we do have our velvet robe and rogue ring equipped. We're going to now there, check it out. You can see them all. And our current uh, range, all right, let's, so we, let's keep stepping west. Look at that, there we go. We're one step away from waking up this uh, <clears throat> lightning beetle directly to our west. Uh, TGGW stealth run, yeah. Stealth runs in TGGW are cool. I mean, it's, it's neat trying to path your way around stuff. But it's also kind of funny when, you know, I mean, the levels in the Grand Gives Way are relatively small, right? And the game is fairly linear. I mean, I think it's become slightly less so uh, since I played. It was 100% linear before. So there would be monsters that, for example, you could not stealth by. If you get unlucky, then there's monsters you just can't stealth by uh, and you have to wake them up, which is kind of bad when you're a full-on stealth build, right? <laughs> Hopefully you have some other way to deal with them once they're woken up. All right, this guy actually did wake up. Got too close to him. Uh, yeah, disengage. I'm, whoa, going to die over here. Oh, shoot. <laughs> this guy's going to kill me. You die. Okay, we died. Game over. All right, we already lost. Stream's over. <laughs> I guess I should have gone through a, a little fat. All right, let's actually not redo this tutorial. Um, wait, uh, yeah, let's, yes, I guess we abandoned tutorial. Here we go. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure we've digone through all the, the, the mechanics there. I was just going through the room relatively quickly there. Oh, thank you for the subscription, Capra. The dungeon. All right, here we go. This is going to tell us more about like the map or something. Uh, we're getting close to the end of the tutorial after indeed an hour. Um, traps. The next room contains a number of dangerous but poorly hidden traps. Um, whenever you're exploring, you're vigilant enough to discover hidden traps before stepping on them. Right, whenever you are exploring, uh, discovered traps appear with a red background. Stepping on a trap will cause bad things to happen to your character, so avoid it if you can. All right, there's a, a torch doing its torch thing. Oh, so those are traps. I guess we don't know what types of traps those are but that's interesting that's that's a new thing disarming traps walking in on a square with a known trap will attempt to disarm it your chance to disarm traps is your thievery attribute in the attributes channel panel um your thievery attribute increases with your vision attribute but decreases with a higher noise attribute hmm interesting how increased vision also increases thievery I mean, I guess it's a function also of what else you can use thievery for, but I would have thought it'd be kind of the opposite. Um, in, obviously, in some ways, in some respects. But anyway, um, note that if you are in combat or if you haven't seen the trap, you cannot uh, disarm traps. To get rid of lingering effects, you have to rest. Our current thievery attribute is pretty dang low. All right, we're going to try and disarm. We're still going to get hit. Yeah. Um... A frostbite trap is triggered. All right, we now have 100%, minus 100% resistance to cold. All right, what's a 10% chance you attempt to disarm the trap? The confusion trap is triggered. We're now purple. Oh, we are confused. Doesn't seem to be affecting our movement at all. I forgot what exactly that does. Uh, the confused status. Um, it's not good, right? <laughs> Gonna do some non-lethal damage to this dog. And this dog who's trying to keep us from... Wait, yes, take a tackle opportunity. All right, what's going on? Using traps. If you manage to disarm a trap or if a monster manages to avoid a trap, you can pick it up and uh, set it for other monsters by selecting the inventory and person space. Cool, so we can set traps now. You cannot set traps while an intelligent monster sees you. <laughs> Some traps can also be disassembled to obtain items. Nice. Ah, of course, cost EP. X to disassemble a trap costs three EP. All right. Uh, 
Were we supposed to have gotten an item earlier that would have made it easier? Uh, maybe it was in the southern room, huh? Let's go back here really quick. Oh, so was confusion. What's in the southern room? Dungeon features. It's kind of, the tutorial doesn't force you to go in a certain direction, which is somewhat maybe not great because uh, then you might miss certain things unless you get start, you know, you're a little more thorough. You can't also control the order in which people see things like this here. This probably should have been the first room we came into maybe. The dungeon contains a lot of different features. Some features have an effect from just standing on them. In the next room, you'll find some of them. Uh, remembering that you can see what they are on the scene panel. C uh, CTX is context column for your characters. See how the features affect you, right? So yeah, there's a lot of different rooms and effects and it's kind of neat how um, those can change your strategy. What is, uh, whoops. So we're standing here. Didn't see anything in particular. You, cut it out. Yes. This raises, if we stand on a pillar, we get extra block. Look at that, you can see the change there. It also puts us in light. Wait, what, did that just move? Yeah, okay, I was just moving back and forth, not paying enough attention. And over here, ooh, resistance to cold, minus 125, we're in thick fog. Nice. Different effects. Other features you have to interact with. Oh, found a typo you have to interact with. Um, typo in tutorial, BTS. Get on that. <laughs> I imagine he'll be watching this later. He's going to have to walk through this tutorial. Hopefully he said enough interesting things to keep him not from getting bored out of his mind while we're doing the tutorial. Eh? Some features you can just walk into. Others you have to stand on top of and press A. The message panel will give you a hint. Experiment. Okay. Um, let's step on the lava and press A. Just kidding. Here, like here, it activates a fungus here. We can... Uh, the glow disappears as you unroot the fungus. So we can actually, wait, we pulled up the fungus there. Oh, it's still, it, it didn't actually put our inventory or anything. Okay, a silver leaf. Leaf aloe, I don't remember actually what these things do. You're gonna have to remember that. Uh, leaf aloe is healing, restoring, a silver leaf is for, yeah, getting rid of effects, okay. Open the crate and get a light bow. Man, we're, we're going to be confused until we rest, which is <laughs> kind of annoying. Here's a magic fountain. What does this do? You drink from the magic fountain. Uh, okay, what happened? What was the result of drinking from said magic fountain? Empty fountain. It's empty now. What happened to us? Did anything happen to us? Hmm. Uh, all right. Disease? Oh. Did we get disease? Was that was that wasn't there before, uh, or was it there before? I didn't actually pay attention. It didn't. It wouldn't have said that. We can check. Uh, or we weren't diseased like from the rat or something. Hmm. Just curious. Uh, I don't see. Hmm. Mm, don't see how we got diseased. Magic fountain of disease. <laughs> I didn't proofread that, like their Patreon blog post. <laughs> I normally proofread my articles, but uh, that one was really long, and uh, I figured, okay, maybe there's one or two things that I would want to change if I proofread it. So uh, somebody else can tell me, right? <laughs> anyway, um, uh, how do we get disease? Actually, is that correct? If it did come from the fountain, I wonder why it didn't have actually... Oh, there's an infection trap, so I I have trouble reading so many colors. I do actually like the fact that there's colored text, especially once you get used to it and what the different colors are. But um, And I'm not used to that yet, but I actually like it when there is uh, some different colors in the text there. Oh, but anyway, I'll get... Yeah, that's right. From earlier, we got hit by a trap. Hmm. Oh, it didn't highlight the green. Yeah, that's what I was looking for is the green highlight. Uh, that would match disease, but anyway, all right, sure. The fountain, though, apparently did not have an effect here. This is a campfire. You can use that to cook things. Strawberry patch. You are full. You cannot eat or drink anymore. 
who eat some delicious strawberries. Why is the food, the first number, pink? Is that just because we're at max or what? I mean, all the other numbers don't do that when you're at max. I wonder what the reason for that is. Um, wait, what was the X over here? Oh, an open crate. That's right. Okay. Campfire. Oh, the confusion is really annoying. Now it's starting to have a more serious effect. <laughs> we could actually get rid of it, huh? Use uh, silver leaf for destroying effects, space to consume. Oh, or too full to do that. Oh, I wonder if that's why it's pink, maybe. You can't eat things if you're too full, or you can't even use the silver leaf. I mean, you can just rest, but obviously that can have its own negative effects. Oh, this isn't the right side here. Cannot consume full. Uh, and also, yes, cure disease and alleviates poison. Oh, so that wouldn't actually have an effect on our... Uh... No, it wouldn't. Okay. All right, let's get back to where we were over here. The whole reason I went back is because I was thinking there might be something that would help us disarm traps so that we could actually use them. Uh, test out using the traps. Whoops, didn't actually mean to do that. Amulet of Speed. If you are fast or very fast, you can act more often than other monsters. If you are faster than a monster, you can run away from it. You can see if a monster have a different speed than normal. <clears throat> oh, found another typo. Typo number two. You can see if a monster has a different speed than normal when examining it. All right, let me uh, examine this guy. Oh, wait. Oh, wait, wait, what? I can't. Oh, no, okay, there we go. Okay. Uh, what is... This guy's, I guess, so it, all right, so never mind. It, it would say faster, faster if there was some difference in speed, but we don't have to worry about that. T, a big fat T, a gray troll, okay. This guy's got a lot of stats. Is he here to kill me? Oh, you know what I forgot? It's to run away from the troll with our amulet of speed. Wait, where's our actual? Whoops. Check out uh, Grant's Equip Fast. And if we check our uh, menu, our character menu here, you can see in the top right corner there, it says uh, of our player character list, it says Equip uh, Fast. So it allows us to move faster than this guy and run away from him because he's deadly. Advanced topics, and then we're done. Also, there's new. Troll in a run in RL, probably dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> Confusion can be gotten rid of with curing potions of some MPs. Oh, yeah, I was curing. Uh, I remember disease being pretty annoying. Because it almost makes you want to rest. Huh? I, I, you can rest it off, I imagine, right? As a temporary status effect. Or is that one you can't rest off? All right, when you press effects, when you press Z, your current attributes and effects, as well as their type, PRM means the effect is permanent. EQP means the effect comes from your equipment. TMP wears off when you rest. Uh, CTX contextual, usually from the floor under you. INS is an instant effect. Nice. All right, take an apple and then we look in here. Dual wield, when you start, uh, you have the status dual wield. This is because you fight with your two bare fists. If you equip either of your hands, you will no longer be dual wielding. Dual wield status gives you two attacks per turn. Your fists count as equipment. You can see on the character screen that the dual wield status comes from your equipment. All right, yeah, you can see in the top right there, equip dual wield, even though, yeah. All right, and in our character menu here, it does say we have fists. Uh, it lists them as actual equipment. Here comes our dog friend. Did I have anything else? Just an apple. All right, let's get through this. The wild dog wakes up. All right, of course he does. Of course he woke up. Um, Fists. You see they give you a plus two bonus to your max MP. Ah, that's pretty cool. I like that. So if you have free hands, you can you get extra MP. <laughs> when you're a dual wielding, you get bonuses from just one of the two items, so you get this bonus only once. Oh. Mm-hmm. You get this bonus. Oh, so you get it as long as at least one fist is unequipped. So you have a free hand to cast magic with. That's pretty awesome. This is why you sometimes see a native two penalty to equip an item, even though the item itself doesn't have any penalty. 
right? So it's just from the fact that it's a consuming hand. Also, there's a, it seems like there's a slight typo there. There should be an extra line, empty line before that last paragraph or sentence. Oh, just little things you notice. Um, got another campfire in the middle of this room. They can tell us about campfires. No, the menu. Pressing Z takes you to the menu where you can rest. This menu also have a lot of interesting options. You can go to the maps to see an overview of dungeon levels and any notable feature you have found there. You may look at discovered items and discovered monsters. You may also create a text file representing your character by the option Make Character Sheet. Finally, you can scroll through recent messages and save or quit your game. Note that you can save even dead characters to review them later. <laughs> that's, that's great. Have to check out some of uh, TGGW's like score sheets. It's not something that they had in the past. Good luck. You know, through the tutorial, and should be able to play without too much trouble. Be able to die without too much trouble. All right, let's get out of there. We're done. All right, and there's oh, some new stuff. What's new? It's kind of cool that there's uh, these are uh, directly in the game here to be able to see what's new in different versions. In fact, I was looking at another game recently that did did done that, and or several others actually. And I was thinking that'd be kind of cool to have something like that in Cogmind. But um, instead, we do have the news feature, which allows you to read, uh, which just gives you a general idea of what's been added in the latest version. But it'd be kind of neat to have, like, the, the full list. I mean, you can, sure, you can open up the chains log itself in any of the many places it appears, including with the game download. But, yeah. What? <laughs> GJ, GJ has a good uh, <laughs> summary there. He says, what's new in Beta 11? The novel. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, thanks for the uh, subscription, Faith on Fire. So, uh, yeah, Runia says, so for a coffee break, roguelike, this is awfully deep. Um, yeah, so the idea of coffee break is uh, that you're probably going to die quickly or runs don't necessarily take very long. That's that's the kind of the definition. Coffee break doesn't have to mean simple. It doesn't have to mean uh, there's not a lot of stuff. Uh, it's a plenty of, uh, uh, it's pretty deep. Um, <laughs> we can wait we can support because you're already using Amazon Prime. <laughs> Cat Jam, thank you. Um, yeah, it's uh, that that's pretty interesting. Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, so it's 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 a big game. It's deep, and there's it's got a lot of replay replay value, which is good because you're gonna die a lot. Um, I mean, I apparently somewhat less so than you used to die in the the original versions, but it's still. Uh, obviously you're gonna die a lot as in really any roguelike but yeah um yeah there's a lot of mechanics youngster says he played some tg joe after my last uh, stream likes how some of the equipment gives you special spells to cast yeah there's just there's so many cool things to discover in the ground gives way so we're now after doing an hour of tutorial and figuring reminding ourselves of the mechanics and uh finding you know finding the two typos that bts needs to really know about we're gonna actually start the game Start game. Select game. New game. We are actually starting for real now to get our second death because the first one was in the tutorial. <laughs> I only got discovered. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's go die. Um, luminescent fungus stairs towards the mossy wall, dirt floor. All right, let's go. Uh, oh, the other thing I didn't actually check was if we come out here, yeah, that it was suggesting we check maps. Oh, maps actually has its own key now. The V key is now does something for, for direct access. Hmm. You can actually look through all the maps. Press notable features. All right, view map, notable features, memory. Okay, there's different modes for it. Anyway, we'll check this out more later once we've actually started filling it out. But apparently, yeah, now we can check maps, which is cool discovered items view food potions all the stuff so like potions you do not have any haven't discovered any of the selected category it's kind of interesting because in some games this would actually have like you know the question marks for all the possible potions in the game and so you could actually see compared to how much you've discovered how much else there is in the ground gives way that would be a ridiculously long list of question marks but yeah this is uh, not going to tell us anything else you can also look back at that, make character sheet, which would be not very interesting right now. All right. Onward. You were going to do that in Cogmind, but you had to sign up for auth trips. Wait, what was I going to do in Cogmind? <laughs> oh, wild dog. Okay. 
we currently you start again we have no weapons uh the very very first floor or two of uh tgw is pretty important because it determines whether you you get like an item that's going to actually allow you to sur more easily survive the early game because you might not even get one and then get really messed up right oh wait no i don't want to do that okay we're gonna have to like knock this guy out All right, the wild dog is unconscious. All right, we're going to leave unconscious wild dog over there. I'm going to go this way. Going to make unconscious rat in a second, too. All right, never mind. Rat is now running away. Rat's afraid of us. Dude, get out of the corner. All right, make you go away. There. Trash pile. I see trash piles everywhere. Give me trash. A copper coin. Don't want a copper coin. Not right now, anyway. But there are merchants. We are going to be finding some... Uh... Oh, shoot. There's a rat. <laughs> We're going to be finding merchants, and uh, there's plenty of places to use your money. Cave lizard. No, that's not good. Monster. So you can find good stuff. You can also find bad stuff. I'm going to die on the first map. Yes, opportunity. Go away, lizard. Okay, a badly dented helmet. Oh, wonderful. You dispose of the useless, badly dented helmet? No. <laughs> you add, all right, we added five rocks. These rocks are too heavy to be of use. Okay, we have 13 rocks now. That's all we got so far. We have 13 rocks and a lot of missing, uh, nice fake out. <laughs> Get around the rat. Yeah, where'd that rat go? Down there now. The message log is giving you mud vibes. Yes, the message log is uh, is very mud like. Push past this dude, and continue to hopefully find something good. Give me a weapon. <laughs> but yeah, okay. This is a prime example of how uh, you gotta. <clears throat> the early game is very important. You gotta build around whatever the heck you find. I mean, you start. Naked with nothing. All right, there's noise behind the wall, which means it's probably something that can't open a door. There's a stuck wooden door, which you can, like, force your way through, but bad things can happen when you try to force your way through a door, obviously. Uh, we got a bottle of milk here, which gives us some energy and also food. Mmm, milk. Man, this guy just falls into some cave after taking a shortcut through the neighbor's yard. They're already punching rats. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I'm going to try not to die here. Come on. There we go. Rat attacked. We're going to have to rest in a second. Oh, wait. What was that over there? An animated hand. Oh, no. Zombie hand. Let's uh, close that door. And I'm going to rest now. This is, oh, your apple may go bad. Your bottle of milk may go bad. So these are things that, uh, yeah. So these are, it's warning that can happen from our inventory. So what we can do is, for example, eat one of these things to get our food up because we're going to rest anyway, right? We should have done that to begin with. These are, but it's good to have those. It's nice that they have those warnings. Pretty, uh, that's not a thing that used to exist in early The Ground Gives Way. Contains a lot of energy. Oh, so this one's, Wait, this one's just, apple's just energy for now. But you can, like, cook apples. You can, there's a lot of interactions in the ground gives way through with all the items. Things that you can, items can turn into other items through a lot of different mechanics. Um, so, those are the things you naturally learn over time. Uh, I think you turn this into a grilled apple at, like, a campfire or something like that. Um, and, obviously, it can be grilled if you get burned some other ways. But items being directly uh, changed in your inventory is uh, not uncommon. All right, so I guess I will drink our bottle of milk because it can go bad anyway. I mean, I might. it contains a lot of energy. That's certainly nice, but... Mm, or we can just wait and see. I mean, we're up at a high level of food anyway. It would be kind of... Uh, we're just going to test it out. It's been a while since we played anyway. We're going to rest anyway. Do you want to rest? Yes. Okay. Did anything bad happen? Nothing bad happened. Nothing, nothing good happened either. 
upgraded by a specialist the apple yes you a cook you can you can like there's all different kinds of specialists i think cooks are even among the specialists and you can get some really like a, a chef yeah you can get some amazing um amazingly good stuff things that can like permanently change your stats too <laughs> grown by a very particular arborist <laughs> people who run orchards yeah i people who run orchards i think they're just called farmers <laughs> uh, rumia says they're called druids <laughs> Specialists, Cogmine ripoff confirmed. <laughs> All right, we're gonna wait for this red over here. Yes, take the opportunity, dude. Anyway, I wanted to. I stepped away from the door because I wanted to. Because you can only knock them out, and so you don't really want to knock someone out in a narrow corridor or doorway because then you have to push past them, which might wake them up. It seems that's what I'm thinking is going on. Uh, what was making noise up here? Something was making noise up here earlier. Probably worth checking out what's over here. Oh, there goes the animated hand. All right, it's coming after us. All right, animated hand. Destroyed, because it's frail. Blade. Oh, we got ourselves a long sword. Give me weapon. Yes. All right, this actually drops our melee by 10%. We do get a little bit of block. Uh, it makes us noisier. And completely... Terrible at thievering. Um, but it does give us real damage. Also notice the hit on our MP. Part of that is because actually we're losing our fist uh, bonus, I think. Oh, no, it will have this free hand, so it wouldn't. No, it's just, just effective longsword. Okay, we now have longsword. Oh, yes. Uh, GJ says open melee is the important thing here. Equip open melee. Um, what exactly does that even mean? Uh, so there's certain things that you... Oh, open is... Oh, there we go. There it is. All right, look in the bottom right corner. Status. Uh, it's uh, our open melee status is... When we step out of the open, we get plus 20%. Uh, so you see our, our attribute over here on the... Wait, let me... Uh, second... Pull that away. Let me get my cursor active again. Uh, so you can see over here, melee is 50% on the stat there, and there's no nothing there. But when we step out into the open, when there's nothing next to us, it gives us plus 20%, and we go up to 70. So we want to fight out in the open with this thing. Uh, not against walls. See, now we're against one wall. We have one wall to our side, so we get plus 10%. If we have uh, none, it's 20. So it's looking at cardinal directions. You don't want any walls in your, uh, uh, beside you. So there's a, there, this is a very tactical aspect of the ground gives ways various weapons. I like it a lot. Um, different weapons will have, uh, some slightly different behavior in that regard. Like there's also closed melee. You get a bonus in, uh, closed in areas. So yeah, it's, it's a neat thing. Do you get negative at three? Uh, I don't get three. Uh, you can get down to zero here. That's a good question. Actually, wait, three would be the end of a quarter. That'd be, maybe you do. No, probably not, but I don't know. Well, that's harder to find. We'd have to actually find a, a dead end uh, single quarter for that. Nothing beyond 0%, as you can recall. Yeah, it'd be pretty rare for you to get at the end, be at the end of a quarter like that, probably. Anyway, so yeah, that's a pretty important stat. So like, we don't really want to do as much fighting in this narrow corridor here. We want to get out in the open if possible. But yeah, that is important. Like, we don't want to fight that rat there. We want to pull him out here in the open and go, boom! Rat is killed. Rat dies. All right. Um, all right, we're done here, I guess. Oh, there's noise to the west. Oh, it's probably... Oh, no, it's a dog. All right. Bring it. Dang, dog's not good. Dogs are dangerous. Just lost some hit points there, whoops. All right, we're in decent shape though right now. And yeah, nothing else we need to do. Oh, also we can throw rocks, forgot about that. That would, uh, That's something we should probably be doing now that we have some rocks so that we don't even have to take damage necessarily. 
All right, down we go. Survive the first floor. I'm guessing there's no block on movement. Oh, big open room. There's a lot of interesting uh, variety in the Grungus Way dungeons too. I mean, some, uh, <clears throat> well, we'll get to see it, but rocks are a precious resource. Mm. Are they really though? I mean, I, was, I guess actually too, you can, oh well. Bloodstained floor, yeah. <laughs> We're in giant room with bloodstained floor. So we can do X here and we can actually just uh, throw a rock at this guy. Throw a rock did not actually help very much. Big room. Yeah, the precious resource of one gold per rock. <laughs> okay, big empty room. I must say that uh, having a, a vision, having lights be a thing, a mechanic, uh, does slow things down, I guess, because you have you are fully energized. You drink some refreshing water. Oh, cool! It's a water barrel. Nice. Fully energized. Uh, I guess this thing is a water barrel too, and so I want to leave it there as a resource, probably then. Unless it also can be bad water. That would not be good. A white worm. Water waste. <laughs> yeah, I hadn't actually seen what that does before. Um, Alright, so this is a, a white worm. He's dead. Threw a rock at it. Uh, this is mud. Let's find out what mud does. Oh, also, look at that. Nice. All right, page up and page down now. We can look through the features. Hmm, feature list can get kind of long. I wonder how it interacts if there's mo too many monsters to show in the list or too many items. If there's different keys for it or whatever. But yeah, I remember early on there was, your features could just be longer than this window because I'm in a big room and you simply uh, couldn't see them all <laughs> on the list, but... Uh, but anyway, uh, so we got dirt floor. Okay, let's uh, walk in here. What does this do? Slow. All right. Yes, mud. Right. And there's a large bazaar in the to the southwest of us. Can I actually use this for anything? I guess this just can be cooked in a fire. Okay. Mud. Slow mud. <laughs> Don't like slogging through the mud. Ooh, found a wand. Straight for wand. Go, wand. Okay. All right, I'm gonna go back this way. So now we can uh, open up our, uh, let's see, wand here. Five EP. Poison bolt. We have a wand of poison bolt. Costs two MP. We can fire this thing twice then. And now we can drink some of that water. Now that we know we can do that with water barrels. That was, that's a nice little uh, mechanic there. Hey, intro. Um, new roguelike? Ah, yeah, not new. Certainly very old. I mean, I'm playing it. I haven't streamed it before, but yeah, I wanted to stream The Ground Gives Way for a long time. I played it uh, a lot in its early days, but it's grown a whole lot since then. A bottle. Wait, oh, it's potion. Never mind. Potion, potion. Unidentified potion. Let's uh, let's see here. Let's identify this for two EP. <clears throat> Potion of balance slows the hastened and hastened the slowed. Ha! <laughs> uh, that's that's interesting. Restore speed. I see. Hmm. You know, in a room full of mud, we find a potion of balance. What if you're neither? I'm sure it just doesn't do anything. Yeah. Uh, a lot of long grass in here. Grassy trees. There's something walking around in here. Oh, it's a blink dog. Blink dog. <clears throat> it is fast. We could, I guess. I wonder if you, I, 
could you change that? It's not a temporary stat. It's a permanent stat. I wonder if you could actually change that with a potion of balance. Probably, huh? Um, it's got here maybe 70 max HP. It's interesting being able to examine monsters like this before it was, you couldn't examine them in so much detail. It can teleport itself and it has a bite. Can use items on monsters besides things like wands. Actually, he, hmm. That's, uh, I guess you can't throw potions at monsters then. It seems like uh, throwing is not a thing. If you can, oh, I think if you coat your blade with balance, it won't actually get rid of permanent fast, only temp fast if they hasten themselves, which is not really a thing. Ah, oh, that's right. We can, I guess we can technically do that. Uh, we can use this potion to coat our sword. Huh, that's kind of interesting. I don't, I don't, I wonder if that could actually be useful. <laughs> this doesn't seem like an incredibly useful potion, but I mean, that's the thing. And in, in the ground gives way, there's a lot of just so many things that are situationally useful or cool. Um, so that, you know, there's some ways to use it, right? All right. We actually have a, a, we don't, uh, not at our full melee potential here because we're not fully in the open, but that dog's going to catch us anyway. So let us, let me see. Wait a minute. Did I? I have 10 rocks. Oh, all right. Uh, space bar. It's on there. Is there an inventory cap? Yeah, the inventory cap is going to be the size of our uh, our list here on the left. But interestingly, though, what there was a thing that was added since... Um, I think I've seen it in the screenshots. I think there's a, like a food bag thing. You can put your... your there's uh, things you can put in your backpack or that hold other item inventory items. like Because otherwise your inventory can get full of food stuff. Um, so yeah, there's a, a few kind of, oh, they are pretty rare. Okay. Kind of rare. There's different kinds of inventory items that hold other things in them. That's, de that's not something that existed in early The Ground Gives Way, but I can see that being pretty useful. Um, storage units in this game, they're nice. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. I mean, because later on, you're definitely going to fill up your inventory. You know, in a game based where you're entirely based around your items, um, obviously your inventory becomes incredibly important. Um, so yeah, having much space there is good until a resting event steals your food bag oh my gosh that would that would suck <laughs> that's an interesting drawback of, of using a food bag if all your food is in it and can get stolen together you might want to keep some outside your bag huh <laughs> all right so let's see wait um throw rocks at this dog throw a rock we missed him with the second attack now we're gonna go all out uh Longsword, this guy, and here comes his friend, the other. Oh, so just is just a wild dog over here. There we go. They're all, they're hearing us here. All right, kill that one. Whoops, wrong button. Nice, everyone's dead. Uh, kill these dogs in their forest. I was kind of mean. <clears throat> I didn't get anything for it. I did not notice. I didn't realize there's some rocks there. I, I don't know if it's a good idea to do this. Oh, ice worm, you're covered in frost. <laughs> oh, God. Wait a minute. If I'm covered in frost, you're fatigued. Oh, you get fatigued by opening these things too. Hmm. Interesting. All right. Um, all right. So being covered in frost, just uh, what did that do for us? Just one damage. Hmm. And, oh, okay, probably check out this guy's stats. <clears throat> One hit point. Wow. Okay, then. Dies. Uh, Nibble does EP damage. Oh, that's so. Oh, it's up there. The ice. I didn't see. read the whole log all the way back there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I missed that line. The Ice Worm uses Ice Nibble. You are fatigued. Ice Nibble. And also covered us in frost. Oh, uh oh, more dogs behind there. These rocks are too heavy to be of use. <laughs> Throw a rock. Keep pressing the wrong button there. 
10% right now. So I wonder how valuable it is to generally want to rummage through things and what kinds of stuff you can find. Obviously we want to do it from this side to rocks. All right, well, we gained some rocks. More rocks. Well, got a lot of rocks. Rubbaging can and will end your run. I know, I imagine so. <laughs> it's kind of a dangerous thing to do. <laughs> can, anyway. Uh, there's a lot of noise behind this. All right, let's um, let's uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna think. I'm gonna skip that room, and we're gonna head uh, uh, go back. Oh, there's more rooms over here too. Anyway, ooh, nice lit room here with some gloves. Give me brass knuckles. Yes. Oh wait, actually, I don't want brass knuckles, do I? It's like it's gonna replace our long sword. Made of iron deals serious damage. Um. Max MP goes down as well. Oh, wait, does this dual wield or no? Oh, that's on our arms. Wait, what? <laughs> wait, what? <laughs> oh, never mind. It's gauntlets. I, I could have sworn these would go on our hand. Why are the breast knuckles on our arm? <laughs> Useless knuckles. It's lethal damage for fist builds. Oh, really? Um, on equip. Oh, that fatigues us too to equip it. I gotta forget about it. I gotta remember that we can't just randomly equip things. Uh, because that is going to actually take a resource from us. Not something I'm used to in this game. Um, oh, I see. It's an arms thing that increases your hand damage, basically. So yeah, I can see what you mean. Lethal damage for fist builds. Gotcha. No armor even? Yeah, really. Whatever. Well, we'll just leave them on. <laughs> okay, there's one more we're missing over to the east. See our melee changing constantly as we're running around different areas. Boom, another open area. Nothing inside. It's kind of nice, I guess, to have the uh, fungus around to be able to examine rooms more quickly. I'm going to ignore the last room for now. Down we go. Oh, a diseased dog. Oh, no. Uh-oh. I'm sure he's going to try to disease us here. He's got three um, permanent. Can't use doors fast. It's also fast, yes. And permanent disease. Infected bite. No. Don't infect me. I don't want disease. Care to get terminal illness from a diseased bite? No. no. <laughs> um... Right, so this guy is now poisoned. I'm gonna leave him outside. You still out there? Didn't you just like die? <laughs> poisoned him. You see, we have one MP left. Oh, that's right. I put the brass knuckles on, which drained one, which removed our one of our MP, which means I can't actually use the uh, uh, a second poison again. I really shouldn't have done that. That was that was not good. Did he die out there finally? Large rock. What do we do with large rock? We can stand on the large rock for no nothing. There's an see. Oh, we can see further. There we go. Take off the knuckles. It doesn't take energy to do that. Oh, it doesn't take energy to remove things. Okay, good. Yeah, I, I should take off the knuckles then. Space to unequip. And yeah, so it's only on equipping that you're fatigued. Makes sense. Oh, you can't take it off while in combat. We're counted as in combat right now. Uh, oh, we're still in combat? Oh, shoot. Here it comes. So they can hang out by the outside the door constantly, I wonder. I'm just they're gonna bark up a storm outside my door here. <laughs> I'm just space barring through this and see what they do. I like how the dog can turn off its disease for the normal bite. <laughs> they hear you so won't wander off? Oh, good point. Hmm. Uh I wonder how how doors can dampen noise. 
or if they dampen, I would imagine not. But I'm not moving. I shouldn't make noise while I'm not moving. Exploring mode. Oh, oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once there it is over there. Status exploring. Huh. That's right. Okay. I, I didn't actually get that in the tutorial. It didn't go into detail on that, but it talked about exploring when you're exploring. And I didn't realize that exploring and combat is, exploring is like a different status from combat. And while exploring, it was like, it mentioned that you always identify traps. You always notice traps or something like that when exploring, or you notice that a trap is there. So that that's pretty cool. I like that. And then if you're outside combat, you'll always be able to find traps immediately. But if you're in combat, um, obviously there's a danger of running into traps if you're running into unknown territory while you're fighting. Which is, or if you're entering a new room that has enemies in it, which is really cool. Uh, I like that as a mechanic. Um, there's always that a bit of uh, of tension there between whether you're in combat or not in a roguelike, and what kinds of things might be tedious to do um, outside combat. But you know, you design it such that it also has an effect. Uh, I mean, the main danger is when you're in combat. So, but you know, combat can sometimes also start at any point. So it becomes kind of complicated in some games. Game has a built-in triangulator. No, it should be the pathing distance. The door probably just counts as an empty tile. I see. So the walls kind of do dampen. Well, I mean, they dampen as, a, as in terms of distance. So anyway, I'm going to wait here. I'm just trying to get them away from the door, if possible. It's kind of funny. I'm actually waiting, but you can't tell that I'm waiting. There's nothing changing on the screen. <laughs> All right, there's, still, there's one sitting out there now. I mean, they're going to hang out out there as well, but... Hello, dog. If you stand on the rock, you get an elevated bonus. You get we got a bonus to our our vision, and I guess also allowed other other things to see us from further away. But yeah, we did get a bit of a bonus there. Uh, you can see the the see the diamond outside uh, here. Yeah, how big it is. That was from standing. That was our vision range from standing on top of the large rock. But that was the only bonus it gave, I believe. All right. So we have in our inventory here. I'm just gonna like do some fighting here. Hello. We're currently at plus ten. All right, wild dog is killed. It probably increases missile range too. I'm surprised you don't know for sure, GJ. <laughs> but yeah, do it. Actually, can we can technically? Um, our range missile range is currently three. Is that uh, we can check here under. We can check our rocks here. The normal range on rocks is three, so it doesn't look like it increases our range. Oh, plus 10% missile bonus. Oh, shouldn't it actually show us? Yeah, contextual. There it is. You can see plus 10% on the contextual missile bonus. So not a range uh, bonus, but it does give a, a better chance to hit, which makes sense. Oh yeah, I forgot to take off our uh, brass knuckles, which I don't want. They're actually making it harder for us to do stuff. All right, time to go exploring. Oh, there comes the other dog again. <laughs> All right, dog. How many, how many rocks do we have here? 14 left. Oh, it's a diseased dog. Wait a minute, is it the same diseased dog? Hmm. Hit him with a rock and he ran away. <laughs> Long grass. Another rock over there. Found a ring of war. Yes. Ring of war. This will make us even noisier. And again, reduce our thievery to wait reduce our, wait if your thievery goes negative huh wow that's that's bad <laughs> i mean if you want to do things related to that makes it wear a more competent but noisier warrior and so it basically yeah it gives us a plus 10 percent here uh gj says it threw off sore off thievery long ago i wonder what it's really for um ring of war is incredible anti-gj item what <laughs> why <laughs> 
You mean because you're assuming he likes thievery? All right, let's set the C instant fatigue one. When he's thievery, when he could commit murder. <laughs> All right, we're going to attach, not attach, we're going to equip a <laughs> ring of war. GJ likes thievery, yeah? Hmm. Oh, Vectus used to make fun of GJ because every run became a thievery build. <laughs> Hmm. It's like I would like to do a, a noiseless build because that's 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 I feel like it's an, a more reliable way to win is to do it uh, with low noise. But um, interacting that also means you tend to interact with a lot fewer things as you're playing. So, all right, disease dog, uh, you're out of range. I'm just gonna run away. Fine. Just let him run away. More fun guys. Cave lizard and a bottle. Okay, cave lizard. Do you do anything special? I don't think so. Just cave lizard. Oh, am I out of rocks? No, I'm not out of rocks. Oh, it's because he's out of range, right? Missile fire range is three in red. Only cowards go zero noise. Take the heavy risk of <laughs> max noise. Uh, it just seems so hard to do that. I don't know. I mean, I did play that way before. I remember when, I, I mean, this is obviously the early TGW when th many things were very different, but I did. It is kind of cool to get like super buff melee builds with just maximizing all their stats, just crushing things. Um, but then you meet something like something magical, for example, which can just like penetrate all your defenses and, cr and annihilate you, which is really annoying. And, you know, noise doesn't have to deal with any of that. It just says goodbye. <laughs> heavy risk likes taking heavy risk. Yes. Heavy risks also meeting heavies in Cogmind. All right, lizard. Do your worst. Cave lizard and kill. Mechanism. A sensor. Also, another magic wand. Let me check here. Sensor. Cannot chant unidentified. Huh. Meditation. I don't know anything about meditation. What's meditation all about? There's a lot of notes in the descriptions. They're always saying you can't have do this while meditating. You can't do this while meditating. A sensor containing a smell you can meditate over. Huh. With a lot of effort, you can learn about it. Huh. So this is like a whole new category of items, apparently. Um... Uh, uh, Considering that a sensor is an unidentified thing and you can identify them and smelling them, you meditate and get some new abilities. Interesting. Meditations are given by items. Hmm. It seems kind of neat. It's, yeah, that's, that's a new thing to me. Is there door strats in this game like in Cogmine? Yeah, for sure. Definitely has door strats. Um, I mean, most roguelikes do to some degree. But yeah, like GJ says, at least there's no eight-way uh, attacks. So that changes some of the calculations. Hmm. In fact, this is one of the things I hate about this game is the optimal strat is to lead neutral monsters into rooms and close the doors on them. Oh, yeah? Hmm. In case they become unneutral somehow or somehow interfere with uh, interfere with things. Identify how much... This, so this costs 5 EP. That costs as much as a wand to identify. We actually currently do not have enough EP. We could get more EP back by uh, drinking a bottle of milk, which seems like a good idea now, considering we aren't at max food and it'll give us plenty of energy. One apple would also do it. Actually, the apple doesn't give us... Maybe we'll just do the apple. Maybe we'll do both, actually, and then identify both of these things for fun. All right, bottle of milk. All right, wait, yes. All right, let's go back. And um, so this can actually... Let's just drink both of these fully energized. All right, now we can go identify our sensor. And let's just identify the one, too, even though it's going to drop us down to zero. Teleport! 6 MP! No! <laughs> That's... More than we can manage. Uh, instant teleport, 50. 
Ooh. All right, so um, target any. So we can target ourselves or something else and teleport it away. But this does have a high MP cost. Man, that is a lot of MP. We can't even use it. Light. Meditation. Light. Makes you radiate in a very bright light. Wait, so this is a sensor cannot chant sharp weapon. Hmm. Meditations require that you don't wield a sharp weapon and that you are not aggravating. Only one meditation can be active at any time. It cannot be used while in combat. It won't snack. All right, makes you radiate in a very bright light. Yeah, that's cool. So apparently we can't do any kind of meditation with a sharp weapon. That's kind of interesting. So there's, it's another kind of new type of build sort of also whoa 10 gp it costs gold huh interesting it's a new use for gold and i guess it lasts until you sleep or something charity 10 gold <laughs> that's interesting vision plus three and also in light neat yup merchants mode huh Rituals costing money sounds like a D and D thing. <laughs> Pay the tiffy, yeah. Uh, interesting. Uh, that's like, yeah, a different kind of build. Uh, I mean, I guess you know, in the early game, that's when you're still trying to work out your build, right? So we've got, uh, you know, right now we can just keep all this stuff in our inventory, and as you get further into the levels, kind of start making decisions on what you want to focus on more. But until your inventory is full, it's not quite as necessary to do that yet. Um. Right now, it probably just makes the most sense to just stick with our longsword, which means we can't do that, or we can't use any of this other stuff we've got. Our inventory is pretty, pretty mediocre right now. Oh, GG says, I have a win with a peace meditation where you pay gold to make enemies friendly. Complete pacifist win. Oh, damn. That sounds like a really cool meditation. Pay gold to make enemies friendly. <laughs> oh. I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah. <clears throat> TGGW did not have these things in the past. But, you know, need it always needs more items. And sometimes that means then adding more categories for items. Which also turn into kind of builds, right? Um, once you add new categories of items, you can have whole new builds around them. Mm. All right, so we got a new potion here. We can't identify because our EP is zero, and we have no way to get EP at the moment other than regular rest. But, yeah, I wanted to identify those things, so we are going to leave this. Okay, so I guess you can code a weapon even before identifying the potion? Huh. The C is there. Uh, does that mean that then our sword would be coded with something we don't know what it is? And then you find out once you attack. Oh no, it's super slime. What is this? Um, aura. This thing is an aura. Okay. Immune disease is slimy, frail. Vile smell causes nausea. Also, it can splash you for poison. Nice. Hmm. It's also slow. So you can always check this list to see what you can use against it. Slow and can't use doors. Coat the sword in a healing potion, stab an enemy to life. That's what I was wondering when I talked about coating an unidentified potion, Mighty Odin. I was curious if um, that would become a thing. Shoot. I gained poison too. Uh, so does that just mean I'm going to lose two hit points here over time or what? What does poison two actually mean? Temp poison two. That would be hilarious. <laughs> um, I'm not actually sure what poison 2 means. Also nausea. Whatever that does. Poison 2 better than poison 1. <laughs> Guess we'll find out. You get weaker from the poison. All right, yeah, okay. It just means you slowly drop your hit points over time. You can see you get weaker from poison. We drop from five to four. Okay, so just delayed damage. 
pretty annoying. Uh, all right, thievery is negative one, right? Wait, oops, wrong. Wait a minute, I wanted to check our rock level here. It's unfortunate that I opened the door and there's literally a sewer slime standing right there. Poison used to not go away as you took damage, really? You're no longer poisoned. Oh shoot. All right, I just totally screwed that up. <laughs> Let him get next to me <laughs> again. That was completely unnecessary damage. Completely. I forgot about the whole opportunity thing. That's not something that uh, I'm used to. That sounds horrible. Yeah, it reminds me of the, um, wait a minute. Why is this guy not dying too? I should have actually read that. Um, Whoops, no, wrong button. Um, I miss, I just keep missing? Oh, it's because of the nausea maybe? A oh, missile is 30% right now. Hmm. Just keep missing. All right, how many rocks do I have left? Whoops, uh, here we go. Oh, I was looking at the wrong side, that's why. Six rocks. Drink the unidentified potion? No, three out of 10 HP good? Yeah, it's gonna be one in a second. Notice we just got poisoned. It may be healing. Uh, yeah, right. It's true. Uh, I'm surprised I haven't killed this thing yet. Yeah, we only need the one hit point. That's why I'm... I don't want to let this guy get next to me, though. The rest are just extra. God, this guy will not die. Oh, no. Screw it. Ah. <laughs> uh. All right, look, is that, oh, he's like, oh shoot, weak acid 50%. Oh, nice, look at that. He left an acid trail on the ground. Hmm. Think you, you think if you had just stabbed him at the start? Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm trying to get other, other strats and techniques in mind. One of the things is, oh, actually, what door does this close if we do this? Close both doors. We can close both doors simultaneously by hitting the wall here in the middle. <laughs> Yeah, it's because we had free moves, which is why I wanted to get away, which is why it was unfortunate that he was right on the other side there. We can actually keep running a dual wielder of doors. We, we could, you know, it was kind of optimal to run away from him and just throw rocks and do damage from distance. So I assume our poison will go away when we do rest here because we're obviously going to rest here now. Oh, time to sleep and have bad things happen to us. Is there anything else we need to do? No, let's regain our EP. And all right, so it's time to rest. Rest up. No warnings. Yes, I want to rest. Thank you. You wake up. You feel a chilling cold, as if the dead were walking. Uh-oh. Something we killed. Oh, whoa. There is now an animated hand and a bone rat here. The dead are walking. Nice. Um, not really nice, but zombie friends. Yes. <laughs> a bone rat. This one only hears us. Sees and hears you. Right, right. Okay. Mysterious vein. Look at that. There's uh, the the wall to the north of the animated hand here is actually glowing. Occasion, uh, it's glowing when we're moving, or even just randomly. You can see it there. <clears throat> it's, when you have like a shovel or something, it's kind of like an indicator that you can dig into the wall and get something out of it. Die. The anime hand is destroyed. Maybe the hand just wants to give you a hand. <laughs> Maybe you could help me dig through the wall. <laughs> um, bone rat. I imagine bone rats are not like all that great. There's three hit points. That's a fair amount of hit points. Um, they seem pretty just typical, average stuff. All right. Go. Oh, no, there's another one. All right. I guess we're just going to have to fight off some rats here. Oh, also, I'm in the wrong spot to do that. I was dumb. Should have moved away from the wall. Oops. Oh, well. Lost one hit point. Penalized. All right. Does that just mean they're nearby? There aren't any more? Oh. What was that? Animated hand. No, there's more. Oh. It's a sound in the corner. What is that sound? Uh oh. Shoot. 
Damn it. He stepped away. Step away from the wall. What's in this? Making a sound in the corner. A diseased dog. No, not again. Don't want to get diseased. Um, I missed him. Wait, where'd he go? Oh, he went back into the corner. Never mind. That's the one I scared away earlier. Okay, we got a green worm now. What's a green worm do? Slimy, temp disease, infected bite. No, no infected bites. Gonna run out of rocks to throw at these guys. Dead now. Oh, wait, what? The dog has permanent disease and perpetually fleeing from you. Won't ever be healthy again or some such. What? <laughs> All right, into the next room. Yes, poor dog. Uh, okay, we found the exit, and here comes another animated hand. I'm just gonna keep walking this way and look around. And let the animated hand come over here. Wait, the animated hand dropped a sensor? Huh, cool, all right. Also, there's a goblin guard in here. Ooh, wow, goblin guards are fast. Panic, uh, is he panicking because there's like uh, zombie animated hands running around. <laughs> no, wait, that's his ability. What am I talking about? Uh, wait, target self. Oh, it shows what they do when they're panicking. <laughs> that's funny. Okay. I am going to wait. We're going to make you panic. Whoa, what? Hey, <laughs> the goblin guard says, you think you look tough with that ring of war? <laughs> nice. The goblin guard picks up a sensor. Oh my, what? The goblin guard fails to use sword. Okay. Okay. Wait. He didn't drop the sensor. <laughs> what? <laughs> NPC in the dialogue in this game is highly immersive. Mm. Yeah, that's good. I, I did see some in some screenshots before. That's something that didn't wasn't in there before. It's definitely nice to have that sort of thing. Um, it's like playing uh, playing playing Cogmine with player two, right? Anyway, he picked up the sensor and he didn't drop it. I, I would have sworn he was going to drop it when he, uh, if he picked it up. <laughs> Jesus, you think you look cool with those 97 rocks? It's my favorite. <laughs> uh, did the goblin just run away? No, we just, I just, uh, oh wait, did he run away? Is that, where did he go? Oh, he did run away. Yeah, he's fleeing. Never mind. I was going to say, he's got the sensor now, though. He's got my sensor. Dude. I mean, I don't know if I'm actually going to be able to use the sensor, but come back here. I want the sensor. He's going to run all over creation here. Oh, that's a wild dog. All right, we'll kill you, too. No, nope, you're running away as well. Whoops. Found a pile of rocks. So yeah, that sleeping really did just fill the floor with like zombies. Oh shoot. Oh, this guy, this guy is not running away. You have no more projectiles, says the warning. Damn. We should rummage through a pile of rocks, shouldn't we? All right, we got this guy. It's the same one, right? No, it's not. It's, <laughs> this guy's in perfect shape. Fine. Um, He's now poisoned, so I'm gonna like. What have you done to me? <laughs> nice. I'm glad the dialogue was added for the other intelligent enemies. It's, that's always nice. Goblin guard, what have you done to me? Perhaps we're in the lair of some sort of hand witch. <laughs> You're a monster? Why am I a monster? Uh, he's actually attacking us. Uh, this is not great. No, I don't. I don't disengage. Never mind. Shoot. I, wait, this guy's gonna kill us. This guy's gonna seriously kill us. How much damage does he do? How is he? Mm, I should have been able to run away. That's not good. Um, should have actually run away. Although he's fast, he'd catch us. Um, wait. Let me see. What does he do here? Damage one. Hmm. Chemical warfare is bad. Yeah, I know. Our melee is 60 because we're in a doorway. That's why I was saying I should have run. He's going to get a free hit if I run away. But Literally down to one hit point. He's almost dead. Oh, he's down to one hit point. And I've currently got 70%. This seems like not good. We could chug a potion or I'm going to attack him. We have a better chance to kill him now. 
Potion Gamble? No, no, I don't know. Yeah, unfortunately, I can't run away. Uh, not gonna put, not gonna potion gamble. It could be anything, right? He's dead. Whew, that was close. Okay, almost died. <laughs> um, well, I guess that means we have to rest again. Let's try not to die while I'm running over here. I've already rested once on this floor. All right, let's rest again. Still alive, not dead. You have energy to identify some of your items. Okay, that's a really cool warning. I forgot, I hadn't done that yet. We had some EP left. I was just waiting until I wanted to get the sensor back from that fleeing goblin who could then, um, and then I could use the EP on that. But uh, yeah, good point, good point. Nice warnings. All right, now we can just outright, I forgot we could just identify it. It is a healing potion, look at that. Heals a small amount, five HP, cool. All right, we're gonna be happy about that. And... Switch over here and rest. No warnings. Yeah, that's a really nice warning, BTS. Thank you for the warning. Earlier, there was no... There, the, the, the whole rest thing didn't actually have this whole separate page showing you all the different changes and, and warnings and stuff. Very cool. Okay, now what's going to happen to us? Wait, you suddenly wake up. You don't even remember that you were lying down to sleep. You feel very confused. Oh, no. <laughs> Funny. So basically, they didn't do anything, if you notice. <laughs> Our HP is still at one. <laughs> Damn. Well, that would really suck if we were on our last food, wouldn't it? We're also confused. Notice it confused us. <laughs> oh, wait. No, no, no. Never mind. Our tributes are still there. Oh, we just get confused automatically. Oh, okay. That's that's annoying. Okay, so uh, so I didn't... The, it's kind of weird that the attributes didn't up, update when it, uh, as it was giving, or before it gave us that message. To be honest, that was confusing. But anyway, um, it should have updated on that screen. Yeah, it's kind of weird that it didn't do that. But yeah, we're healed now. Um, so, <laughs> Mighty Odin says, so we're definitely putting on the sword then, right? Yeah, see, if we'd coated our sword with that unidentified, I wonder what would happened with it. It's actually really become like a sword of, of healing. Um, I imagine it would. <laughs> would not be surprised. Okay. Um, we currently have one gold. Confused. Stab yourself with the sword of healing. <laughs> yeah, that would be pretty funny. <laughs> to do something like that. Uh, if that would actually do something for you. Like, you get, the ben you get some kind of benefit from being attacked, but then also it heals you so you don't have to take the drawback of, of attacking yourself. First resort. <laughs> An enemy's coming. Stab yourself in the head. <laughs> uh, I don't remember what Confused does other than just like move us in directions we want don't want to go in, but I, I guess I'm willing to walk around Confused. Ah, shoot, something hurt us outside. That's annoying. It's something that wants to come after us. It's not fleeing. You can't use your wands? Oh, okay. All right, there's a there's a drawback of being confused. It's poison bolt. Um, cannot cast confused. Correct. So we wouldn't be able to poison uh, something, which has been somewhat helpful so far. And also we have MP, but it's not really worth. I mean, there's no real good way for us to get rid of the confusion anyway. So, all right, what the hell is outside the room? Oops, Mis being misdirected. And stumble. Minus thievery. Oh, we get even more minus thievery when we're confused, which clearly we don't care about. In fact, we can also check this screen too and kind of see what else effects. No, wait a minute. Huh. Interesting how thievery doesn't really count. It's not considered an attribute. It's a stat based off of an attribute, so it's not on this list to show the the effects. Oh, it's at the bottom. Never mind. The alignment on some of these things, the stats and pages, seem feels kind of weird. Also, the fact that it's all the way at the bottom. But, I mean, I guess there's a standard spot for it down there because there's other things we can't see, which, I don't know, be kind of nice to see some of the stuff. But, yeah, you can see the confused effect there is uh, two. Minus confused. Hmm. All right, um, back to what I was doing here, which is waiting in this room to see if what's outside the door will leave the doorway. And the answer is no. Fine, I'll just open the door and it's a wild dog. Hello, wild dog. 
Now he's running away. <laughs> it's okay. I'm gonna find that goblin. The one who stole the sensor. Is this the goblin who stole the sensor? No, this is, hey, wait, oh, oh, he got healed up because we rested. That's right. If you rest it, everybody else gets to rest too. Carrying a sensor. He's got our sensor. He's back to max now. A super annoying rest event. Yeah, I'm wake up and you can't use your wands. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm going to wait right here. So I get my max bonus this time. I'm going to stab this guy to death this time. All right. Yeah, give me back that scissor. All right, who's making all the noise? Oh, I know what it is. It's a cornered dog. Um... There he is. Now it's a dead dog. Okay, dead end room. Heading back out. Oops, all right, there's a pickaxe. Ooh, check it out, a pickaxe. Pickaxe. We can go back to the vein with that. Found a pickaxe in a pile of rocks. All right, what's that? It's coming for us. It's a disease dog. I do not have any ranged weapons anymore. Shoot. I'm gonna get diseased here. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be hard not to get diseased here. We're now diseased. Alrighty then. Alright, so what exactly does disease do? Don't know. Uh, I forgot what disease does, but yeah, there's a, it's some, not something you want, obviously. But so now we have, um, yeah, I guess it would be nice to have a, a way to see exactly what those do. Shoot, I'm getting confused. Three rocks, yes. If you check the map and use the right arrow key, you can easily see all the veins. Oh, cool. Yeah, I know, I remember where the vein is from earlier. Um, but maybe we saw some more or something, or I hadn't paid attention to them. That's cool. It does show you features. So we can go to, uh, oh, we can go straight to V. You can use using the V key here. And you can see all the features we found. Oh, look, that shows all the veins on the previous floors too. Notable features. There's a vein. So you can see in the, the list here, it shows, look at that. That's a pretty cool view. I like this. That's a really cool system. Um, little wolf features, and we can see there's a, that original vein we saw earlier to the northeast here, and on the previous floor there were actually two, and two in the floor before that. If you want to go back, um, there's a, a a dot there. What is that dot actually? I don't know. I guess the thing here is you also have to remember what they are, or maybe not. You can view the map, and so oh, there it is. Notable features down there: soft soil. Oh, soft soil. You can dig in, I guess, and perhaps get something if you had like a shovel. But anyway, with the pickaxe, we can go check out a vein to our northeast here. Oh, we need these map notes and objects. Mm -hmm. Very useful, though. Yes. All right. So, yeah, that's a useful feature. going to go get confused here as we head east. Step on this rock, see how we can see further. Step down from rock, go towards the vein. Oh, there's a rotten door. Oops. It's got damaged. What? <laughs> Whoops, I closed that door earlier too, just to see if I could. <laughs> it turns out the door I closed was rotten and it fell on me. Well, at least they're still alive. Perhaps the soft soil is just starting to garden. Oh, right, soft soil, not just for that. Yeah, you could, soft soil makes more sense for planting stuff. Right, right, we wanna plant something there. All right, so with a pickaxe, you need some tool. All right, I have to actually, oh wait, so I actually have to, a tool used for mining, space to use. Energy costs two. All right, so it does cost EP to use this thing. Um, space, and it works automatically. Okay. I guess it would make more sense, honestly, if it went straight back, to, just stayed on the map. It doesn't need to come back to the equipment menu once you're done doing that. Silver coins. We found 50 gold in the wall. Okay. I wonder, I wonder how worth it is go to go back to previous veins. 
There's a chance you can salvage the collapsing door as a shield, but we failed it here. Oh, cool. <laughs> or get a tower shield from a collapsing door. <laughs> uh, that'd be pretty funny. <laughs> Where better to grow things in an underground cave with no available sunlight? There's all kinds of fluorescent light things going on in here. Fleeing diseased dog. Thanks, BTS thought of everything. <laughs> BTS did think of so many things. I, I love this game. It's a lot of fun. It's very high replay value. Obviously, it's goes and going much slower now too because of uh, um, because of uh, the fact that I hadn't played for a while and I'm still learning again. But so we're now in Underground One, Two, Three. You see all the maps. You could technically go back. And actually, while we have EP, I wonder if it makes sense to do that, is to go back to and look at previous veins and see what we can get out of those. The only, I mean, I guess the main drawback is if you meet other newer enemies. Oh, shoot. Or if you play too fast like that and get whacked. Oh, you can't identify when confused either? That's true. So mining is your way to spend this EP? Ah, good point. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's what I was mainly thinking of in terms of EP and the fact that we're... I didn't think of the confused part, but... All right, let's grab some more rocks. And then... Uh, twisty stairs up. And those veins are located... All right, there's one to our west here. In that room. I didn't even notice it before. I don't think we've really left a whole lot behind that's dangerous anyway. Getting confused here. Stumbling around. I'm going to skip past these rocks. Oh, that's what was down here. All right, we're next to the vein. So we can go into our inventory and do uh, use the pickaxe. And <laughs> it really shouldn't skip back here. We found some rocks. Okay, we found some rocks. <clears throat> I think a lot of the, uh, the UI's skipping uh, back and forth between them, quickly back and forth between the map and the inventory is probably not desirable in a lot, a lot, most cases. Mm, okay, check the map again so that I can see exactly where that vein is. They are hard to see on the map. They only glow occasionally. And you can, can see them in the features list though. So there's one place to recognize them. Got some more rocks. It feels pretty long. The site said you could finish this in two hours. Oh, you can totally. It's because I, I play I play my roguelikes fairly slowly, especially when I'm starting out. Um, you can definitely you can finish the whole run of the ground gives way. In, and plus, I spent the first hour in the tutorial, so uh, yeah, a full run will be under two hours generally. Uh, so technically, we can go back and do the other one too. Which oh, there's even two more out there. But uh, yeah, I tend to play also when, mainly also because of streaming. Oh, kill the jam moth. Okay, <laughs> uh, because I'm streaming, I stumbled again. But uh, yeah, I mean, I played Rift Wizard and won that on my first run. It took 26 hours. <laughs> but the a normal win for that game, uh, you know, even on off stream, I was winning in about four hours afterwards. And other people can win it uh, easily in like an hour or two. So. It's also a case of me playing, spending longer playing. Let's actually see right down to the west here. I guess we don't have to worry about these guys. Uh, probably should not have done that. Ideally. All right, where is the actual? All right, uh, shoot. He's actually gaining on us. Never mind, I just killed him then. Also, uh, I haven't gotten 100% used to the commands yet either. Uh, we found yet more rocks. How many rocks do we have now? 97 rocks yet? No, we have 24 rocks. Oh, go pick up some more. Never mind. We have 28 rocks. <laughs> All right, spot our next vein up there. And our final pickaxing gives us get more rocks. Okay, wonderful. Well. Rocks are nice, I guess. Yeah. 
Also, I haven't been using fast movement much yet. Down we go. And disease dog. Stay away, disease dog. Guess we'll stick it for you. Um, guess Roddy took like forty hours to finish her. Twenty six is basically twenty six is not forty. <laughs> and honestly, six of the twenty six was no. Was it six? No, no. It was th no. Um, let me think. No, never mind. It was three, three or four hours fighting just Mordred. Even though I didn't need to spend that long. <laughs> All right, now down we go. Um, next floor. Ooh, what is this? A magic portal. Huh. All right, then. I guess that'll teleport us somewhere or something. What is this one? A fountain of helium. A fountain of helium. What is all this stuff? <laughs> so much weird stuff. And I guess I, a fountain of helium. I don't know if I want to use a fountain of helium. Yeah, Rooney, I could have beat Morgid like almost immediately, but ended up spending forever just fooling around drink the helium magic portals are for backtracking oh is that so liquid helium hmm oh activate the portal okay uh wait oh we have to a, a activate magic portal you activate the portal okay so it allows the fast travel between different areas that's kind of nice liquid helium is cold mm, yeah <laughs> this this magic this fountain of helium hmm Fountain of Helium. Activate with A. All right, we'll, we'll look into that in a bit. I don't know. I don't want to be drinking the helium right now. All right, in here we have shallow water and deep water. We can't even walk in deep water. It'll warn us and tell us, yeah, we can't move over deep water. We have no way to do that. There might be something else in here. Oh, that reminds me of one of the earlier dungeon features, which is really common in the ground gives way and also really dangerous, was those valves that you can release water with. And they, like, fill entire floors up when it gets deeper and deeper. And eventually you can, like, <laughs> just, just flood the place, kill things, kill yourself. <laughs> There's that fountain of helium right there. What is that? Oh, it's going to give us flying, isn't it? There we go. <laughs> We're going to turn ourselves into a helium balloon. You loved those, Vectus? Were they completely removed or probably just reworked slightly or something? It used to be one of the most common dungeon features in terms of, like, big things that can happen. You saw, saw them on a lot of runs. I imagine they're not as common now. that There's so many other things, too, but... Hey, Jack9, welcome to the stream. It's going to give me flying. What makes you think that? I'm going to drink from the helium fountain. You gain flying. Okay, we're now a, a flying helium balloon. We're also exhausted... Hopefully that doesn't come in doing anything bad. We gain flying. We stumble while flying. <laughs> We're going to fly over this and kill ourselves. I uh, hope it doesn't run out. Actually, I didn't actually check that. I'm sure it doesn't. It's a temporary effect. There we are. Temp flying. I mean, it's a temporary effect. It's the kind of thing that you lose when you have to rest or whatnot. But right now we have flying. Is it going to get any, get, actually get anything in here? There's, there's statues. That's it. It's just a room full of statues. The this this room was here to to, to fake us into uh, sucking up the helium fountain. <laughs> um. Anyway, well, this room seems okay. <laughs> Too bad. Yeah, this is a nice room for. I won't. I I do know how the since having won the earliest versions, I do know how the end works. And um, this isn't terrible, but oh, is there a vein? Oh, no, no. That I think that might be. Is it? No, there's nothing in here. There's no veins, no nothing. It would... Uh, all right, there's nothing here. Yeah. We, we, we gained flying for no reason other than to gain flying. Unless there's more. All right, there's shallow water. A wand. Confused. Just remember, just a reminder, you're in danger. Wait, why are we in danger? I mean, we're in danger because we have low health. Is there some other reason we're in danger? Oh, is in the exhausted? What's the exhausted status effect? What does that even do? Temp exhausted. How did? How did? How, wait. How do we even get exhausted to begin with? Actually, 
Oh, because if it was her flying around with exhausted over the deep water, that would be bad. Oh, you mean it, it, we're at zero EP. I see. Yeah. Well, right. I mean, doesn't that just mean we can't identify things and we can't use, we couldn't use our wand anyway. We can't identify things. We can't uh, attach, oops, sorry, equip things. <laughs> oh, I see what you mean. EP consumption stuff will drain HP. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't know that. But what kinds of things drain? I've never had that happen before. Is that, are you referring to like events that would otherwise drain your EP instead drain your health? Because I've never actually uh, drained HP otherwise. Non-lethal damage. Whoa, what? Oh, GG says non-lethal damage from mobs does EP damage. Oh, really? Non-lethal damage. I, I hadn't even been paying attention to that and I didn't know that mechanic. Is that, did they say that in the tutorial somewhere? I don't recall that being mentioned. That seems rather important. Um, where did we take non-lethal damage before even? Mainly normal damage. Again, having uh, up and down arrows, working here for one line and whole page up uh, for entire pages would be pretty useful for more quickly scrolling through and checking stuff. Uh, anyway, I mean, I, I guess I, I'd seen it at some point before. I was trying to look for a reference here though. Uh huh. Some oh, some mobs mainly do fatigue rather than actual damage. I see. Okay. All right. Anyway, yeah, we're we're not in great shape here. That's for sure. We only have two food left. Hmm. Silver chest in the middle of this room. Um. We're on deep water. Oh, this is where the helium comes in handy. Carefully open the chest in excitement. Wait a minute. This has a color in the background. Doesn't that mean it's a trap? Enchanted, or does that mean it's enchanted? Enchanted standard light armor? I don't know. There's a lot of abbreviations going on here. Uh, means enchanted? Okay, yeah. Early? Wait a minute. Is that, is that a change from earlier? I thought enchanted items earlier, they would instead, uh, they glowed, they flashed with a different color or something like that. But now it's a background uh, color. In fact, I don't think TGGW used to use um, background colors. Now there's like the trap background color and uh, this. All right, all right, uh, enchanted armor here. Enchanted STD, yeah. I guess it's enchanted standard light armor, something enchanted. St oh, studded, oh, right, because, oh, right, right, right. Studded, that's why you said studded, TJ, right. STD is for studded. <laughs> I always think of STD referring to a standard. Um, uh, studded light armor, sure, okay. Well, we can't actually equip it yet because we don't have any EP, but. Um, obviously we can put that in our inventory here and then also get across this deep water and grab this magic wand. And then, I don't know, it's kind of scary going over deep water, huh? But it's in, I wonder, uh, I wonder how much, uh, the map gen works, uh, in the ground gives way to intentionally put these things in the same, uh, map. I mean, it's got to be related, I would imagine. Not quite to the extent that Brogue does this sort of thing uh, and have whole kinds of maps with interrelated keys and stuff, but I'm sure the Grand Goes Way does a lot of it. Uh, over time. Enchanted <laughs> STD seems like wizard problems. <laughs> you will pass. All right, uh, let's open this door. Really, we should probably put on the armor sooner rather than later to avoid dying, but... There's a sack to the south of us. What is that? The sack contains nothing of interest. Okay. <laughs> gonorrhea is problem enough. Magic gonorrhea sounds disastrous. <laughs> yes, wizard problems indeed. All right. There's a stuck wooden door to the north. Is it going to force us to go through a stuck wooden door? Confusion. Confusion reigns. What are our stats? I mean... Fusion, that magic wand, um, current, all right, hope we don't splat a door shrapnel, yeah, that's, uh, that's what I'd be worried about, gloves, all right, we found gloves and boots, all right, heavy gauntlets and sandals, nice, we can't equip any of this stuff yet, even though we really should equip stuff soon, luminescent fungus, no enemies yet. This is kind of scary. 
Hmm. Wish we could restore some EP here. If only we hadn't gone through the veins. Hmm? <laughs> I'd be able to attach. Equip. Not attach. Equip all this stuff. Uh, this feels like a dangerous area. No, it's not dangerous. Hmm. The bat uses fly. The bat gains flying. That's an interesting way to start flying. <laughs> also, there's a river crab in here. Uh, huh. Interesting. River crab. Mm hmm. Hey, Salamander, welcome. Modeling a swarmer right now. <laughs> the ground gives way to you being stuck in a dungeon, but yes, the game is very tongue in cheek like that. Um, can see you in for vision. Hmm. All right, so we got a bat, 3 3 HP, and I guess its main thing is it flies. Wait. Wait, how come I can't see the, I can't examine the crab? Oh, never mind. I'm pressing the wrong button. I was pressing up and down. Up and, oh, only left, right. Up and down don't actually toggle or go between enemies. Uh, seems like it could do that. Doesn't have to, though. <clears throat> um, a river crab. What does this actually do? Uh, it swims. Does that mean it has to swim or what? Probably not. Just seems like some an average enemy, really. Although it does have block and armor, which is kind of good. That would make it a little harder to kill. All right, what kind of, uh, we don't have a whole lot of things we can use here. Oh, we do have an emergency potion we can use if necessary. All right. I could also just close the door, but uh, this this is, we haven't found the exit. You know, we did find the exit already. Uh, I could just close the door and just ignore this room. Don't know if that's a great idea right now. We will instead wait for the bat and throw rocks at it. Well, okay, throw one rock and miss it, and then uh, attack it with our excellent many skills. Okay, that didn't work. That didn't work again. Okay. Finally managed to hit him for two damage. Machine the crab is just running around in there. You hear a loud sound. Uh oh, I'm guessing that was a trap. Crab doesn't look like it cares. Yeah, maybe it was a neutral. Uh, huh? Oh, shoot. A shrieker mushroom. Uh oh, what's this do? Uh, wake all. Oh, okay. Huh, interesting. All right, so this just like wakes up everybody. Hopefully not everybody in the whole floor, huh? What's their range, I wonder? Oh, the background highlight on the crab indicates friendliness. Oh, okay. I see. I didn't recognize that. I should have actually also, I guess maybe it might have listed something like that in the uh, thing there. You hate fungus? <laughs> All right. I think it might be about time to rest. Mainly just because we're really low on uh, HP and, or, and out of EP entirely, which means we can't even use our armor. Wow! Identifying this enchanted armor takes 10 EP. Hmm. That's a lot of EP. Cool. Um, does it ID if you gamble and wear it? Uh, I imagine, yeah, that's another question. I don't know. We'll find out. I would imagine it does. Oh, yeah, GJ says, yeah. I mean, yeah, so it does identify on using it, and I guess that means there's also bad enchantments as well. Uh, otherwise, wouldn't make as much sense. Um, actually, no, I should probably do it from here. Oh, it mentions curses in the description. Oh, did it? I didn't read it at all. 
uh, what, down here. Oh, there it is at the bottom. Yeah. All right. This item is enchanted with unknown magic. It may be cursed or it may be beneficial. With significant effort, you can find out what it is. I like that ID mechanic. It's it's nice. Okay, I guess it's time to rest. Right, I guess it'll give us warnings. I'm, I'm starting to rely on the warnings, I guess, if there's something else we can do. Uh, you were diseased. Oh, shoot. Oh, that's bad. <laughs> that's what disease does. Ouch. You're diseased and will not recover HP. That's what magic STDs will do to you. Nasty disease. Oh my god. Yeah, now I can now I re, now I recall why I really didn't want to get diseased earlier on and was trying to do stuff from dis, at a distance from, against those dogs. This is that's a pretty bad one to not being able to recover HP from resting. We have a potion which will at least help in the the near term, but that's pretty bad, yeah. If you double rest, you'll go back to max HP. Oh yeah, that's right. So I guess your disease, you can rest with disease. It'll still remove the disease status, but you can rest again afterward. Gotcha. Yeah, that makes sense. But otherwise, uh, it's, who knows when we're going to be able to find a way to get rid of that. Also, we're confused right now, which is really annoying. Also, we're flying, which I wonder if that'll have come with any drawbacks eventually, but not so far. Uh, what? <laughs> uh... uh salamander i think the swarmer sprite top is, is a uh it's a an antenna but look closer at the pixels if they look like uh look at look for the antenna bits uh so i guess we don't want to rest then i mean i'd like to get a way to get have a way to get rid of this disease right now um i don't know how likely Uh, I'm not in Cogmind mode right now, Vectis. <laughs> I'm playing The Ground Gives Way. <clears throat> All right. Yeah, does an S have an antenna on it? <clears throat> Let me see what Jack9 says. <laughs> 2 HP. All right, so one option is to just use our potion and keep going with this. The other option is with the double rest would be bad because then we'd have zero food left. I think I'm gonna use, go the potion route. That also means uh, not not fighting what's in the room over there. But we could go the other way. Oh, never mind. That's right. This door is this door is stuck. Stuck doors can kill you. In fact, they're really low right now. Um. All right, let's do this. Let us. Oh, stuck doors can't kill you, but they cost four EP. Oh, does it cost four EP to get through? Hmm. Stuck one can't kill you. Oh, okay. It wasn't like a rotting door then. All right, let's get some HP back. And I think I'll just skip past here for now. A desert eagle. Is this a pistol? <laughs> um, hey, we're all flying here, I assume. Very fast. Not flying right now, but quick, attach it. Yeah, <laughs> quick, attach the desert eagle. <laughs> very fast. So this wasn't even just fast. It's very fast. Deep sleeper bite. Range four wing flap. It has a ranged attack that does knockback. Oh, that's cool. Knockback two. It requires MP, target burst. Also does fly to give it flying. That's kind of neat how that's an actual effect they can do. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why is it surprising that I know what a desert eagle is? Beck, does think, doesn't everyone know what a desert eagle is? All right. Um, very quick bird and powerful wings. This thing has five hit points. Pretty strong melee. No, it's a weird thing to know. Mm, mm, maybe for the young people out there, it's a weird thing to know. <laughs> hmm. 
Hmm, I guess I could just fight it from right here. I mean, yeah, it, it, <laughs> exactly. Everyone knows Desert Eagle from Counter-Strike. <laughs> I knew what a Desert Eagle was decades ago when everyone was playing Counter-Strike. <laughs> and Tomb Raider, yeah, Tomb Raider too. Mainly Counter-Strike. But it's also a popular gun. You see references to it all over the place. Not, I mean, it, not just in Counter-Strike, but that's certainly one of the more... Uh, uh, frequent references. Oh, there's like jewelry in here and a spear. Nice. Uh, I wonder if we'd want a spear. Yeah, exactly, Vectus. Decades ago, you were one year old. <laughs> uh, I think I just want to fight this thing. I'm worried that it'll kill me, but wait, how much damage does he actually do? Let me check that once more time. One more time. Okay, so it's one, it's a bite is only one damage, so we should be able to take him out. Should. <laughs> they have their own thievery skill there. All right. Uh, I guess I'm going to throw some rocks to try to kill this thing. Rock. What? Whoa. Did you see that? I saw that. Did he flap his wings and we get like the wind bounced off the wall and bounce did he bounce us off the wall? Did the wind bounce off the wall and push us the other direction? What just happened? <laughs> you fly like a leaf in the wind. Oh, it's because we're flying too. <laughs> You're knocked into the dis <laughs> Okay, now I'm actually reading the message log. I was trying to interpret the animation, and that was just too confusing. Reading the, the message log reveals what occurred. He flapped his wings. We flew like a, a, a leaf in the wind because we're flying, I guess. Maybe that it happened differently. We're knocked into it, and then it flew away. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, it bounced us into it, but it was kind of weird. I mean, you would think it would bounce us away from it, you know? But instead, I guess it reversed. All right. Okay. Um... Nice reaction there. He's coming back for more. <laughs> he's still, still, he's still doing it. Here comes the desert eagle. Boom! All right, fails to use bite. Desert eagle's gonna die. Yeah, the desert eagle falls to the ground. The desert eagle dies. Flying doubles knockback distance? No wonder. So did I actually bounce off the wall there then, probably? It seems like maybe. I mean, if doubling the distance would have been a uh, distance of four. Uh, it doesn't seem quite like it, though. Anyway, all right. A spear here. Um, rusty iron short spear. Something tells me that's not going to be as good as our, our long sword. But I want to look at it. I guess it. I guess it from a spear probably gives you closed melee. Um, uh, let's see here. Um, oh, right here. Current <laughs> equipped. A less block. Less damage. Yeah, I need the damage. Anyway, we'll just carry around that. And yeah, we do gain closed melee from that. Uh, I believe, yeah. Gain closed melee. So that's better for fighting in like uh, corridors. Makes sense. All right, let's go pick up some jewelry. Ring of peace and a monk ring. All right. Who are these two? Monk ring. Um, three fatigue. And equip. Can't even equip this thing, of course. Uh, gives us, ah, uh, okay. Marshall. Adds to our marshal, which marshal does, I guess that's your, your um, the damage from your fists. Cannot equip low EP. This one only takes one. Oh, it's a different fatigue for different, equipping different uh, rings, which is kind of interesting. Hmm. Uh, it's not just slipping it on your finger. <laughs> oh, knockback is actually just movement in a random distance? I think you mean direction? Um, and they're heavy rings. Not damage as such. It means you attack more times. Uh, is that, oh, is that for martial? Oh, you get extra attacks. I see. So, yeah, kind of like extra damage. So, oh, that makes sense. Sure. Make, that's cooler, too. Proper workout. Yeah, the monk ring gives a proper workout. And so the ring of peace, what does this do? 
Uh, okay, yeah, basically just defensive stuff here. Low EP can't equip it, but it would give us extra block and free free block and armor, which is nice. We need we need to get all this stuff on us, which requires EP. We need to like I want to throw on this the armor. We've got um, this ring of peace that I'd like. Also heavy gauntlets. Do I actually want this? Uh, so anyway, the breast because we saw heavy gauntlets, lowers martial. Less missile, but better armor, max HP. That seems pretty good too. I'd like to put on this armor, the gauntlets, and the ring. Hmm. Oh, interesting. Also, these gauntlets also give you extra non-lethal damage for your attacks as well. Resting to put on the armor, the ring could be good. Yeah, I'm thinking about that specifically. For, especially since we use the potion, so we got the HP back. It would also get rid of all our other negative effects. Uh, I'd say we should probably do that, especially before continuing into this map. All right, here we go. We're going to still be diseased, but... Well, no, I mean, we won't be diseased, but we won't gain any more HP, but that's okay. We got it back through other means. MP, we can't even use our MP anyway. So, you're diseased and will not recover HP. Thank you for that reminder earlier, by the way. But we will get our EP back. Your body is still weak after fighting your disease. No HP regeneration. All right, time to check it out. All right, let's, um, I'm not gonna identify this. I'm just gonna outright equip it. Really equip an unknown item? Uh, does this really need to switch back to the map for this? Is it doing this? Why is it switching back to the map for that? Just to show an animation? <laughs> All right, uh, hopefully that's uh, good. If we can actually stand studded leather armor of protection. Oh, it's studded leather, right? It's not even light. Uh, studded leather armor of protection. Your standard leather armor with additional protective iron bolts. Uh, but it's enchanted. Max MP is down yet again. Chant protect. What is what does that mean? I don't know what chant protect means. Um, okay, let's go back and uh, attach some, or attach, <laughs> equip some other stuff. I am going to say attach now to the end of time. Ring of peace. Give me that ring of peace. We <laughs> look at our ring setup. We've got a ring of war and a ring of peace. I almost feel like these cancel each other out, but they don't. Um, they're complementary. <laughs> And we're also gonna, I guess, I wanna put on these gauntlets too, I imagine. I mean, it does lower our missile, but the extra armor and an extra HP marshal, we don't really care about, I assume. The lower missile is kind of annoying because 30% is already pretty low. And it's gonna make our rocks even more useless. Oh, you can press C to cast, is it? And I'm gonna put on these gauntlets, and I'm gonna look at the armor here. Press C to cast spell, oh yeah, it is. But, um, yeah, it does. In, <laughs> in peace, prepare for war, and war, prepare for peace. Mm, yes, good quote. That means we're fully prepared right now. Uh, but yeah, there is a, it, it says press C to cast spell, and the spell is um, protect, whatever that means, and also, what does casting it do? Does that drain MP or does it, is it a temporary use or I don't know. <laughs> oh, press, you know what? I should probably read everything. Press, I'm not reading everything. I'm reading chat instead. And chat tells me to press X. <laughs> Charity 25 gold. Okay, so yeah, another use for our gold armor plus 20% temporary effect. Hey, that's pretty cool. It's a meditation. Wait, we can't actually do that when we're wielding a sharp weapon, right? Yeah, I assume that. I, I already have this mental association with no no sharp and meditation together. It require that you don't wield a sharp weapon. Only one meditation can be active at any time. It cannot be used while in combat and will stack. All right, so that's pretty cool. Armor plus 20%, that's neat. Uh, we can't use it again because we're using a long sword, but so we could use it if, for example, we got some other, like even just like a flail or something, that would work. It just doesn't work with this. Anyway, we'll see what other kind of weapons we come across, but that's kind of neat.
Sharpness box spell, yeah. Good job, chat. <laughs> yes, very good. <laughs> Tell me what buttons to press. I'm waiting. Forty-five percent physical DR and twenty percent block chance is pretty good. Yeah, for early game it seems seems neat. Um, we got our armor now up to forty-five percent. Push F two. Wait, what does F two do? Does the F two actually do anything? No, I'm not gonna press F two, Vectus. Not unless someone else tells me to. <laughs> Alt F four. <laughs> okay, now I know you guys are pulling my chain. <laughs> F2 does nothing. It doesn't switch to mouse mode. You sure? Alright, now we're feeling powerful. We got some enchanted armor. We're not dead yet. I always feel powerful when I'm not dead. Yeah. Here we go. Ooh. Found ourselves another magic portal. Gonna slowly make our way across this uh, fungus room. Activate portal. Rock. Single rock. Uh, you dispose of the useless broken skull. Okay. Wait, wait. Where'd the rock go? Oh, never mind. I uh, never mind. That was probably a type thing. It looked like a rock, but once you get closer, you found it was a broken skull. <laughs> oh, hey, fluffy cat. Well, <laughs> you're pressing L. Um... All right, pile of rocks. I think we have enough rocks for now. We're currently at 35 rocks. Plus, also, we suck at throwing rocks now, so. Hey, wait, what's this door to the... Oh, the door to the east is a rotten wooden door. Hmm. Rotten wooden door doesn't seem great. Missile bonus at the top there. Disease dog? No. No disease dog. Ha <laughs> ha! Close the door on the disease dog. Damn it. It's disease dog gonna like protect that room now I don't want to get diseased again <laughs> that would be bad I think I'd rather hmm we trying to open a rotten door I can just hurt us huh didn't turn out that bad boots we don't even have any boots on do we wait a minute can I find some boots no oh wait I found sandals right I forgot about the sandals sandals yeah. Oh, Marshall one. Oh, sorry. Sandals now give you Marshall one. Sandals didn't. Sandals used to give you used to be uh, minus noise. I think in the back before all these other mechanics were added, but sandals were in the game before. I recall them being a common early game item that I think gave you minus one noise. Now it's Marshall, so they became the monk class. Uh, wing boots. Oh, mm, that sounds interesting. What, they make us flying? Yes, gain flying. Huh. Instant fatigue three. Rare footwear. Ooh, we got a rare item. Actually, I don't even looking at the rarities of items. This is a unique, right? Uncommon. Uncommon, uncommons. Ring wing boots are rare. We already have oh wait, no, wait a minute. I don't I, I already I forgot. I lost our flying. This is a new way to get flying. Because I lost our flying from earlier. I wonder what negatives there are to flying. But we had to rest, so yeah. We're down to one food. All right. Well, there's one area to the west there. Yes. Winged boots. That'll come in handy, probably. Gonna check for veins here. All right. Yeah, there. Oh, wait. I don't. Well, hmm. Spending. Do you spend EP on the veins, right? There are some veins here. I think I'd rather wait on that. Well, yeah, I like it as a resource. That's cool. Um, I think I'm going to wait on that one. Is there anything else I need to knit from the inventory? No. Hmm. <laughs> oh, there is another magic wand, but I, I'm not really much of a magic user anyway, so it seems like kind of a waste to identify it. Maybe. Also, that comes from not knowing necessarily what they uh, could be in terms of uh, what are the kinds of good effects we could get. There's all, I'm sure there's all kinds of stuff. Technically, we can use Poison Bolt once. Five EP. Going to wait, though. I'm going to save it because it doesn't seem uh, vital. And we're getting kind of low on other more basic resources. We will continue diving. And we were... Wait, what? Oh, dungeon. Oh, this is new. Um... 
we were in the underground. Now we've actually made it to the dungeon, which is probably scarier. Oh, no. We just noticed some... Uh, hmm. uh, just noticed a, a trap over there. Because we're in exploring mode. A flea man. What is a flea man? <clears throat> All right. This guy's got... Uh, can't use doors. He's very fast. He's flail... He gives us instant fatigue. All right, so this guy does fatigue really fast, does fatigue damage. He can jump. Scroll for more. Wait, how do I scroll? Oh, up and down. Okay. Nice to be able to scroll through these now. Um, hmm. Three. I'm, I'm looking at the, uh, the asterisk, which is moving up and down on the left side. They're showing how far we've gone down. One, two, okay, it's, I see. So each asterisk is for one line. It's kind of an interesting way to show the scroll bar. Neat. All right. Um, he can teleport. He can knock back. Anyway, this guy just jumps all over the place, apparently, and can maybe hit you for some fatigue damage. Hmm. Doesn't seem too threatening. Throw a rock at him. Well, I could throw a rock at him, or I could back up where we'd be able to better use our longsword into the open. But he'll gain on us really fast. You know what? Actually, that's probably more important considering our missile is so low. Oh, wait. Or oh, he's not even going to come after us. Wait, what's he doing? He just... Oh, here he comes. Oh, is he neutral? What is he doing? Flea man. Humanoid. Uncommon. It's interesting to see uh, rarities on the enemies, too. But... Uh... Oh, that's right. I guess if he was a friend, he would have that background thing that we were talking about. Earlier. A very small man frantically and erratically jumping around. <laughs> okay, so he's just... Maybe he just can't even get near us anyway. Oh, no. Okay, now he is here. Okay, uh, no, I don't want to disengage from him. I want to just attack this guy. Flea man is damaged. Fails to use touch. Flea man dies. Okay. Hmm. Another trap. Thievery build that can use traps. That seems really cool. Um, to kind of run a thievery build and uh, be able to start picking up traps and, and using them uh, against uh, enemies. Of course, they're probably, I mean, they're a finite resource because I don't think more traps would appear after you sleep. So it seems like that could be a uh, problematic thing in some scenarios, but... Ultimate trap reconfigurator. Mm-hmm. Uh-oh. A magic leech. Actually, something tells me I don't care about a magic leech. <laughs> it's going to drain my MP. <laughs> Whoa, what? Oh, temp max MP drain, too. Okay. I thought it would just drain some current age, uh, MP, but no. Max. Hmm. Well, he died. Yeah, there was his little magic leech home in there. Bottle. Potion. You put the potion in the backpack. All right, we're going to identify this. Uh, you realize it is an infection. Oh, poison. Oh, potion. Okay. Infection poison of viscous uh, bubbly substance that smells horribly. It's a poison that affects living creatures if coated on a weapon. Mm. That's true. I could uh, now I can actually use this to coat our longsword in this. It, I mean, it only lasts, I guess, until the next time. But I don't know how useful it'll really come in handy. Also, wait. Oh, it gives disease. How does that even help, really? Glad I didn't drink that, huh? <laughs> it gives disease. How? I wonder if that would really be useful to give things disease. I like do like the idea of coating weapons, though. Large vizier. Money, large viziers in here. Is there any other features? No. Hey, Ogawa Ogawa. Um, <laughs> yeah, the font. Uh, so I'll, for anyone who was, uh, wasn't around the beginning of the stream when I was doing a lot of the background info on the Grand Gives Way, um, this is, I've switched the font to Proggy Small, um, just a, a general purpose programming font that uh, you can find 
online. And the color scheme is uh, Dracula, which is an iTerm colors scheme. You can find that through a various uh, number of uh, sources. Did you read the manual? Is there a manual of Ectus? I didn't know there was a manual, but I, I wanted to start the stream completely fresh, so I definitely wouldn't have read the manual. Um, um, yeah, if you, uh, there is a manual. Oh, nice. Huh. Yeah, I'm interested in reading it then. Uh, I didn't wouldn't want to do it before, though, because I wanted to, again, I wanted to start from fresh. Oh, it details the status effects and their interactions with monsters. Oh, that's good. That's good. Interesting. One thing, I guess the tutorial should mention that manual then, for sure. Unless I missed it and it did mention it, which is not impossible because I'm reading chat as well. And skipped a couple lines. But the tutorial should definitely mention there's a manual. Uh, like towards the end or whatever. Um, a section saying that, you know, if there's more info on these things in in the manual, which you can find, you know, in so-and-so places or whatever. That's actually one of the things that uh, Cogmind's tutorial does. I mean, a tutorial is not going to cover everything, right? Um so in Cogmind, actually, because the point is the tutorial is enough to play the game without reading the manual, along with all the context help and stuff. And so what I did in Cogmind was have it so that after you've been playing for a while, um, then it tells you more about it tells you about the manual because I mean it's different. I mean I can see how in the ground gives way it could be important to have access to the manual earlier on because it's kind of like Rift Wizard in that you see a lot of terms in the UI that you don't know what they mean and there's no way to access what they mean there. They're like in Cogmind, there's context help. You can just click on stuff and uh, or use your keyboard and, and get extra help right there from the interface, but you don't have that available here. So it's more important that newer players probably have to know that there is a way to get that information through uh, something other than trial and error. Uh, but within, in Cogmind, since you have the context help, what it does instead is after you've been playing for a while and, and after you get further in the game, then it tells you, uh, now might be a good time to uh, check out the manual for those who actually notice the message even because Cogmind is not very intrusive with its tutorial messages and people miss them. But yeah, uh, anyway, back to that. Um, the Grungus Way should mention that in its uh, tutorial that there is a manual with uh, those kinds of details. Um, oh, so yeah, one of the other commands I added there, I can check out uh, the YouTube my YouTube channel. Um, uh, tomorrow we'll have this whole video up for anyone who wanted to check out the uh, earlier parts as well. I mean, technically it'll be also be on Twitch for a little while, but not forever. So when I did more, I did uh, started with a bit of an intro to the Grand Gives Way and some of the history and uh, and dev stuff. Obviously, not my game, but um, yeah, talked to the developer over the years ever since the uh, beginning. So let's get back here, and um, we are going. But uh, yeah, I, I spent a while going through different fonts and colors and kind of settled on this one. I think it's a pretty neat set. All right, so we are going to head back west. And we're in pretty good shape right now. But that could change pretty quickly, I'm sure. <laughs> as soon as we meet an enemy that uh, we can't do it. All right, there's a torch just sitting over there. What other kind of items do we have? We have a free hand as well, which is good for using our wands, but we don't actually uh, need those very much. Okay, somebody's waiting. Oh, did you hear me? It heard me. Something heard me. What is it? What is it? Come into the light. Get closer. I'm getting out in the open where we can fight it more effectively. Whatever it is, it's coming. It's an armored goblin. Okay, that's not good. Carrying a mechanism. Oh, he's carrying something. Is this guy carrying a sensor too? No, never mind. He just stole my other sensor. That other dude is different. Um, but he's got a mechanism. I, I actually, it wasn't a sensor. Wasn't a mechanism, was it? What, what was it? Actually, I think it was. Yeah. Anyway, different categories. I'm, I'm not too familiar with all the categories of items in here. This is, that, that's a new thing. Category. Scroll for more. Oh, a whole section was missing down there. That seems kind of kind of weird. You might miss the scroll for more. I would I would par show the partial info from the next category if possible. Seems like it's done in, in groups there, but I would show the partial info. Uh, interesting, also when you go down one, yeah, just, anyway. Hello, welcome Santi. Yes, it is very interesting. The Ground Gives Way is a great game. Um, we've been just been going through, all, getting refamiliarizing ourselves with all the uh, mechanics and new things that have been added over the years. So I haven't played for a while, so it's starting off slower, but once you get faster at it, yeah, your runs will go 
much more quickly than this. I'm still actually on my first run, which is pretty surprising. I mean, I used to play one run, well, it was when it was harder too, but also die within like 10 to 15 minutes and then start to play a lot of runs within an hour or two. And then when something starts to stick, then just take it and try to maybe win with it. But I don't know how it is in the new version either, or all these newer, the much more recent version. The um, But back in the day, there was a noticeable difficulty spike about halfway through the game. The first half of the game, once you kind of knew what you were doing, as long as you found a basic weapon, you're pretty much probably going to survive that far. But then the second half of the game, you probably just splat <laughs> really quickly. Um, very noticeable. So I wonder how that's been smooth over time. But we'll see. Once we get there. Uh, so Armored Goblin here has... Oh, this guy's... Hmm. 25% armor. No, 40 total. Oh my gosh. This guy's... With five hit points and that much armor and block and wow, this guy's like stronger than we are. Like seriously strong. We are the only. Thing, we're only the only thing we slightly. We're like an armored goblin. This guy's ah. Vectus found the nightbot's botnet command. I did add a botnet command. There's a, a number of different uh, commands in there. Also, you can throw in the uh, actually I'll. Do the do the TGGW to give everyone a link. Uh, like this is a link to the game because we got some more people showing up. You in the open, them in a closed spot. Oh, use their open melee. All right, so that's something I hadn't noticed here. Chew, do they? All right, does he? Oh, it's at the top there. You're right. Permanent open melee. So yeah, you can. We want to get them into a closed area and us into an open area. The problem is, uh, all right, how fast are these guys? They're not fast. We can. They're about as. Oh, wait a minute, they're slow right now. Armor. Oh, that's never learned this their ability. Um, they're the same speed as us then, probably. So, to get them into an open area, we'd have to draw them south into the Bazir room. Um, I assume they can't catch up to us, but he's just going to follow us all the way. We're going to get a nice line of Gs on our map memory here. That's a good idea, though. Basically, we pull him to where we get max benefit, he gets the least benefit. Going to throw a rock at him for good measure and throw another rock at him because why not? And now we're going, there's something else around the corner. Oh, what was that from earlier? Armored Goblin blocks your attack. Notice that when he blocked, there was also the shield animation. All right, actually managed to hurt him. Um... Ah, oh, we are, we're armored too, so at least that'll help us out. Ooh, we managed to do two damage. Ooh. Nice, got him. All right. Oh, wait, what? Oh, whoops. <laughs> I was looking at something else. Magic, wait, what? Oh, he dropped a mechanism, which is the magic shot. Floating club. Huh. Mindless. Uh, wait, what? This is an enemy running around. A floating club. <laughs> Where'd this come from? <laughs> There's there's a flying club just walking around whacking people. It it causes knockback and fatigue. <laughs> okay. Uh sure. I'm gonna like actually is this thing any fast? No, it's not fast. Alright, we're gonna like throw a rock at it because that's what we do, throw rocks at things. Then we're gonna whack it. Uh it got knocked back. He fatigued us. Stop that. How many hit points does this thing have? Okay. The floating club is destroyed. It falls to the ground. <laughs> So now there's a club on the ground. Somebody made this magical club. Also, there's a, a magic trap. I wonder what that is. All right, let's see. We probably don't even want this club. Magic trap. What do, what do you do with a magic trap? Wait, wait, what? what? Place it in the backpack. Wait. Oh, it's at the top. I wonder. <laughs> Look at the bottom. Neuromagic stuff. Okay, so here we go. It's, oh, it's okay. So it drains MP5. Space to set. Oh, cool. So we can find traps as items. We don't have to always use the traps that are um, found in the dungeon there. Hmm. All right. Hmm. Still a fair no most Most of the things we got, we can't make use of at the moment. All right, now we're going to clear out these Gs. 
And yeah, that worked out pretty well. We only lost one hit point in that encounter. One hit point, and we did lose some EP though. I think we only lost one total there. It's interesting having some enemies that only do EP damage. A torch, sure. Leather arm guard, maybe. What does this do for us? We currently have heavy gauntlets. This will, oh, this is, all right, so this is kind of like, this is your ranged, this is for ranged combatants, which we're not, so we don't even need this. I'll just keep it in my inventory because why not? And then we're gonna come back here and go south. Head through this door, wooden crates. Hmm. Let's find out, food crate. <gasps> food, piece of bread. More food crates. I wonder if there's a reason to maybe leave food in the crates rather than putting it in your inventory where it might bad things might happen to it. Iron short spear. Bottle of milk. Ooh, nice. And a portal. Oh, trap. The main bad thing is food rotting because you can't eat it due to being full. Hmm. Yeah, that's what I mean in terms of not wanting it in your uh, inventory and preferring it instead, instead here. Um, preferring to leave it. I mean, we know there's food inside these crates, um, so we could leave it in there. Or, we, could, I mean, some of the food, like piece of bread. Uh, the thing about a piece of bread is I like how it also gives us energy. So we can increase our food and our EP uh, at the same time. So that's a reason to use this stuff now as long as we're low on it. There's no reason not to, really. Unless... You have ideas of where of what you might use it for later, like with uh, like I was talking about earlier. You know, there's a lot of item interactions in uh, TGW, and so you, items can turn into other items and better items. And uh, yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, GG says mainly the downside is leaving food is resting will spawn enemies you might encounter. Backtracking. Yeah, I was mainly thinking of in the short term, like while we're on this floor, only not not all the way into like future floors and then come back later. Because, yeah, that would be, I wouldn't want to go that far with it. But, um, all right, so it probably makes sense to consume, well, I guess we can just pick, find some more anyway. Um, or we don't need to quite yet. Let's see, is there anything else I needed to identify in here? Oh, um, magic shop, no. No. Oh, yeah, I don't know what the sensor does. I don't know if it's worth identifying, though, because honestly, I don't, we're not going to be able to even use a sensor until or unless I get a weapon that's not sharp. And I have yet to find... A non-sharp weapon. Oh, yeah, that's right. Wait, what? I'm sorry. I'm just carrying around this extra spear too. I should probably just start dropping some of this stuff. Like Cogmind, only one item is allowed in one space. So if you drop an item on top of another, it spreads out to another location, which I think is really important for a roguelike. Um, uh, just for quicker interactions and quick, more quickly being able to see what's around rather than having piles of all kinds of stuff and then having to go through the piles and it, it makes things a lot more complicated which is why you know the earliest version of Cogmind even though it's made up of a lot of parts um, and so much junk can get strewn around that uh, can add to the appeal plus it's also I mean it became really important for the interface to just kind of uh, make sure that the game wouldn't slow down too much. So, anyway, I'm just getting rid of a few extra things here that I won't need. Uh, well, a couple things anyway. And there's a blood leech. Why do these things? Um, I guess this blood leech heard us behind the door, um, but it didn't make noise on its own. So it kind of likes hanging around the door, waiting for us to open it. That's why we're seeing so many enemies right behind doors. When you're noisy, as we are quite noisy, that's kind of one of the main, uh, a big disadvantage. If you're noisy enough, you're attracting enemies in the next room straight up to the door, so you can't even get away um, and have to fight them right, at, right there. Oh, bleeding. Hmm, that seems not good. Is bleeding any different from poison? 
probably similar. Instant hunger. <gasps> no. This guy will drain our food. Two hit points. Probably going to die pretty quickly, though. Oh, bleeding means you can't heal until you rest. Ah, got it. It's kind of like a different form of disease, only instead of attacking your rest potential, it's attacking your um, uh, healing potential. All right, well, that was a useful room. You hate those guys, Vectus? <laughs> yeah, that... Anything that gets rid of your, uh, oh, this is already active. Anything that gets get rid of, that's uh, because blue instead of green. I mean green instead of blue. <laughs> yeah, getting food is an important resource. And there's a bottle and nothing else in here looking, looks like. Added a bottle of milk. All right. There's still uh, two food crates over there. Um, we'll get to them later. Lava room. What's a dungeon without a bunch of lava? Uh, there's a wooden chest over there. On the other side of the lava. Piece of bread. Wow. Got another piece of bread. Sweet. I do have winged boots. Which would help us reach that. Uh, another helmet. Um, a lot of bird's ears. Kind of nice, actually. Full helmet. Ooh. Full helmet. Gives us even more max HP. Ups our armor even more. Uh, lowers our vision, though. Ooh. Vision minus one. Hmm. <laughs> That's a lot of armor, though. Anti-thievery helmet. <laughs> Marshall also goes down. Instant fatigue, two. Hmm, vision minus two kind of sucks. Let's put it on. All right, we're going to put that on. Armor. We're now mega armored. Uh, what is... Oh, a curtain. Huh. Interesting. This isn't a door. It's a curtain. Into the next room, I guess. I guess... Oh, a curtain. So, <laughs> I guess enemies that can't open doors can still pass through curtains, though. Or are they still openable like anything else? That'd be kind of funny. You just close a curtain on something and can't open it because it can't open doors. All right, so there was food over there. No, no, nothing else. Okay, let's go. Uh, coins. Just a curtain with twisty stairs down. Well-lit rooms. Picked up five copper coins. Never mind. Copper coins worth five gold points, right? Um, thievery is bad, I see. Yeah, our thievery is now pretty terrible. I'm quite curious what we could do with a good thievery build, though. Okay, now the other thing. We don't have anything on our feet yet. We could put on some winged boots. Ah, we can't do that until we get rid of our fatigue here, but we can do that by finally consuming some food. We have plenty of food here, and there's even more. There's two food crates over there, too. That's quite a nice find to start getting some food here. All right, bread and milk. Hmm. I'm going to go for the milk. You feel energized. You're going to start flying now. Yes. We now have permaflight. Gonna drink the other milk too. And then go back. Now that we have flying, I'm gonna go back and get that chest. So you can fly right over the lava. Ooh. I'm gonna go around that. If we're flying, I guess we should, wonder if we should trigger traps or not. Wooden chest, amber, 100 gold. Thank you. <clears throat> 156 gold now. You fly over floor traps? Oh, okay. Is that a floor trap there? Oh, there we go, flying over the trap. I, mean, I guess that's all, they're all floor traps. I was thinking of things that like, you know, might shoot out darts or whatever and you can't necessarily fly over them, but cool. As opposed to door traps, I see. Makes sense. Hmm. All right, so the main question is, do I want to grab more food before going down? We've got two pieces of bread left. Um, uh, look at that. It does l let you see the features that are remaining. We can see them on our dungeon list here. It shows uh, shows those crates there. Uh,
Oh yeah, we can identify the wand now. You're right. Yeah, good point. Now that we got plenty of yeah EP here, I forgot I hadn't done that yet. I should go for one. Yeah, we hope it's a cheap one. <clears throat> All right, contaminate costs only one. Disease. Oh, okay. It's a it's a diseasing wand. Spreads a horrible disease. Uh, the victim won't be able to heal even after resting. I mean, okay. I can so what we can do the main use for this I can see is enemies that we've hit and they fled from us and eh, you can just contaminate them and so that when you want to rest later they don't heal but you do doesn't seem super amazing but i mean it costs one right it's uh, <laughs> at least it's usable the main use is not in the description ah mm -hmm. oh disease mobs enter fleeing state earlier than usual i see hmm well, that makes some that makes sense too. Then you could you would might want to use it on something you want to force to flee. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. Anyway, well, yeah, that's useful then. Uh, could come in handy more so than teleport, which we can't even use. Poison bolt, okay, but I guess situational, and I'm not really caring about the sensor yet. But now we're back down to four EP. It's probably okay. Wait, these are. I'm going to leave the food there for just a bit. I keep pressing spacebar to go down. <laughs> Four rocks. Rusty flail. Oh. Well, here is a, well, rare? Rusty flail is rare. Does that just mean rarity, though? And rare, rare doesn't always mean good. Oh, um... <laughs> Rusty Flail, max MP, oh, max MP goes up, right. Oh, resistance to spells, thievery, even worse. Uh, less block, better melee. Really noisy, whoa. Flails are like, everyone come this way. <laughs> Big iron ball, connected to the chain. Okay, by a specialist, it's rusty. Hmm, good weapon, just very noisy. Yeah, it does seem pretty decent. Um, hmm. Slightly more for a magic user who wants to meditate, so you're kind of like monk type dude. Oh, does three damage unrusted? Oh, uh, that makes sense. Yeah, I was gonna say it's it seems like it could be better. Um, or the rusty is gonna give it some kind of modifier. I guess rusty's all minus ones or less damage. Hmm, it's not bad. Also, it would technically allow us to use these other things, but is there another thing? It, it I guess, oh, I guess this also has um, open. Melee as well, because uh, it doesn't have an unequip change, and we currently have our longsword. That's the thing you got to remember with the list, uh, the item detail list in uh, the ground gives way, is that it's going to list changes, but not necessarily what the weapon itself has. Ecstasy of open melee. Oh, ecstasy full stats. Okay. All right. Cool. Yeah, you can. So you can see with X, it opens the full stats. So that's the difference. Why is there an empty line after open melee? Um, Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, that's a that's a good thing then too. Normally it's showing you a comparison, but you might want to actually check the whole stats too. So, cool. Um, so yeah, it does have open melee, which is why we didn't see it as a difference. And you can see it's damage down there is two. Uh, T's one, max MP minus two, noise five. Cool. Reach one, reach one. Ooh, yeah, something like we can get longer reach weapons. Huh. Well... Yeah, it's okay. It's hard to see. I'd probably prefer a non rusted version so we can actually do extra damage, though. But Oh, oh welcome, Fractal Wiz. Busy day at work. Almost missed the run. Yeah, we're been. it's still the same run, though, <laughs> aside from the tutorial death. But we're going, uh, yeah, we're getting towards the end, but eh, still could have a good uh, hour left, maybe, of stream time. It's going going well enough. A rusty kite shield. Why is everything else being rusty? I want rusty. A rusty statue. Look at that. Everything's rusty. This whole room's rusted. <laughs> We're in a rust room. Daggers of fire. Wait a minute. Okay, that's rusty. I was, <laughs> was going to say daggers of fire. That's cool. It's also not rusted. We got closer. Rusty throwing daggers. <laughs> yeah, everything. This is definitely a rust themed room. Uh, I assume this is enchanted, which is why it has a little background color on there. 
rusty throwing daggers of fire. So right, they were we saw they were daggers of fire, but only when you on approaching closer did it become apparent they're rusty. Missile, wow, missile. We they, it's impossible to hit anything with this. I guess it's because of our current setup. They do a decent amount of damage and have better range. Huh. Surprise damage three. Cause bleeding and fire. Wow, these things surprise people, cause bleeding, set them on fire. Sheesh, that's pretty crazy. Uh, oh, they're, they're thief weapons and don't use the missile stat. Uh, oh, really? Oh, 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 but are these... Oh, so wait a minute. Wait, but they're throwing daggers. They're, they're ammo weapons, though. I can see they're ammo. They don't use the missile stat. I don't get that. Why would, don't, don't throwing weapons use the missile stat? It uses your minus two thievery for accuracy. The 7%. So in other words, yeah, we're not going to hit with them anyway, but that's interesting. Huh. I guess there was a note about that, I think, in the ranged combat or something like that. Anyway, that's, those aren't going to be useful, I don't think. There's a weapon. It's a rusty pickaxe because we're in the rust room. Uh, we already have a regular pickaxe. We'll just leave that there. Rusty kite shield. We could check out the rusty kite shield. Rusty kite shield will make us, wow, 0% resistant to spells. Man. Marshall gets terrible, Thievery gets terrible. We're just gonna, and we get a little noisier, but block goes way up, of course. Max MP, then it goes negative, gives us some extra HP. So this is, this really specs into physical uh, combat. Dude, you come fighter. Um, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, um, hmm. Well, could be useful. I don't know. Let me think. Block would be. Yeah, it, all that would do is just keep us from using our uh, MP at all. But then, I mean, you're less likely to need uh, that stuff if you have such good protection. That's the main disadvantage. No, it does make us even noisier. Imagine this, then plus a flail. You're like walking around and everything on half the map's coming after you. On this build, the health counteracts magic more than MP does. Depends on whether you want to use spells. Yeah, I think that's what that's what I was thinking here is... How much do we really want to use the spells? I've only got three MP. That really depends on uh, what kind of enemies we come up against. This door just, there's a door in the middle of the room. That's kind of cute. I wonder why that happened. I wonder if that's a mistake or something. <laughs> or something weird happened. Why is there a door in the, just sitting there in the room? All right. Uh oh. Something hits you by surprise. We just lost one max HP and one lack max MP. We just got hit by a spell or something. Temporary minus one max HP and MP from something. Have fun getting nuked by spells out of vision. Yeah, we don't have good vision, that's for sure. Actually, wait, I mean, yeah, we do, we're carrying, remember, we get this full helmet on. Of course, we're not exactly. Um, can't use our, we, don't, we lose a lot of our melee bonus here, but wait a minute. Uh, they're not going to come over here. <laughs> Hello. No one's coming. Great. Perfect. That's not what I wanted. Hmm. Also, I don't like that temporary effect. It's like an likely an immobile eye. Oh, great. That's not something I want to keep getting hit while I attack an eye. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it's something not coming over here. So, oh shoot. There it is. Draining eye. Draining eye. Mindless. Very slow. Oh, very slow. So it can move? Oh, it's flying and very slow. Hmm. Never sleeps. Can see invisible. Yeah. Draining gaze. 95%. Stop draining me, dude. 
Sheesh. Walking around in a full helmet. Very terrifying foe. Yeah, that's a pretty annoying foe. Imagine also if there's more of more of them. Wooden chest. A magic wand. Okay. Not that I can actually use magic wand, but uh, let's just find out what... It, oh, that's five. That one's right. That one's five. We don't want that just yet. Can't see very well, that's for sure. <laughs> Uh-oh. Who's this guy? Uh, they have a question mark next to them. Is this some kind of merchant? Hello, merchant. Bert the Lord. He's a jeweler. Prices average. Gold, 1,800. Vigilance, 79%. Uh, okay. You can sell items. Oh, whoa, what? You can sell items in the ground gives way? Huh. That's interesting. Seems, that's cool. Um, services, crafting, pickpocket. All right, we're not going to pickpocket this guy. <laughs> Like, why do you have your full helmet in my pocket? <laughs> um, uh huh. Selling to the best NPC is a huge micromanagement game. Comes next release. What? <laughs> yeah, it seems like uh, selling can turn things into a lot of micromanagement. Which is why you don't see it in some roguelikes, and it gets complained about a lot in roguelikes as well. But then the roguelikes that don't have selling. People are always asking for selling, you know, when they have shops. Why can't I sell? Why can't I sell? <laughs> Pickpocket or no soul. Yeah, the, the total non-thief here, pickpocketing. All right, let's check his uh, services. Gold sense. This service can be used most at most once per day. Detect treasure. So, wait, what? <laughs> for 50 gold, he'll sell us the ability to detect gold. <laughs> Obviously treasure in general, but... <laughs> Gives us detect treasure. Hmm. For 50 gold. So we can see where stuff is on the map. It could be useful. I, I know, I mean, we talked about it earlier, uh, that one of the cool aspects of Ground Gives Way is the fact that you can accumulate a lot of buffs and modifiers and be, make yourself more and more powerful. And as soon as you rest, you'll lose them all. But during that period, you're really powerful and hopefully you don't get negative ones, right? Well, that can be a strategy too. You, you uh, save up all of these buffs. And then once you think you're at the point where you can take full advantage of them and they'll they'll do as much work for you as possible uh, before you might lose them all. Uh, then you just like drink all your potions and use all your magic and then just kick butt for a while. And then, yeah, hopefully things don't get messed up but because then you're left at the, you're in a much less powerful state, perhaps in a bad situation. But uh, it's a really, really neat idea is to stack effects. So anyway, we're not going to care about gold sense right now, I don't think. It's kind of neat to be able to know where stuff is, though, because it can tell you whether it's really worth, for example, going into rooms um, or in certain areas. Uh, there could be really valuable stuff in there that you, that then becomes worth taking on certain enemies for. And the other way around, you, you don't want to be fighting enemies you don't have to fight. So in The next release, all NPCs was in one big cell net, so you don't have to micro which is best to sell to. Oh, is that is that true, Vectus? So that is, you're just joking. BTS is actually going to be adding this new feature where you can just sell direct instead of just to avoid the micromanagement. That will be pretty cool. And now Rooney is asking, do we really want merchants? Well, <laughs> yeah, I remember uh, Vectus who's talking about. You guys were talking about stuff in the in the the Grand Gizway channel. Oh, you can't. That's why you can't bear to play it in this release. Oh, I know, Vectus. You just can't help yourself. That's that's us developers have to try and uh, try and uh, help help you guys. You can't help yourself, right? <laughs> Crave the cell net, but that doesn't mean I've got to remove the garrison from uh, <laughs> the the remove the uh, the garrison uh, riff from lower cogmine. Sorry. <laughs> Um, but yeah, going back to the point, actually, Rooney just mentioned, do we really want merchants? Um, and I think the idea is you just need to do it right, right? We want merchants, but we want them done right. Uh, the idea is, uh, I mean, obviously the, the main problem with merchants and games and roguelikes in general, I mean, is yeah, the, the whole fact that you collect junk in order to sell it, right? Um, and 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 just the micromanagement aspect, but obviously, if you're aware of that, and uh, you can you design around it, 
part of the problem is too that people want it to be realistic um, and or you know I have this why can't I sell it you know they like and, and people also just like accumulating accumulating stuff and then selling it to accumulate more stuff the money and uh, it's just it's it's a part of the game that some people do enjoy uh, even if it is micromanagement and then other people really don't like it and then it becomes an optimal strategy to do things that maybe are tedious and unfun but anyway I mean if you keep all this in mind when you're designing the systems it um, you know you can design around it and plus the idea in Cogmind is certainly going to be completely different it's not the merchants don't want your small lasers <laughs> right there it's going to be a whole com it's it's going to be a different thing um, there would be a different, uh, you know, obviously Cogmind specific uh, theme for the whole thing. And uh, we wouldn't want it to be tedious. So, yeah. Um, oh, Selenaut says the person who played Dungeon Man does it, sell all the crap in bulk. Um, yet so much it doesn't really matter. Yeah, there's, yeah, some games have kind of worked around. They, they kind of allow you to sell, but just kind of, I'm um, just optimized the tedium away so that it's just all automatic um some games like i guess one of the things it's not a, not about selling but no no it is about selling it's right uh, ultimate adon uh has an interest some interesting loot systems where you like you pick up loot and you can just directly convert loot into things you need like health or experience or or uh, money and uh, not money though I and mean, i haven't actually played it myself but i know that you directly convert loot it's like circumvents all these other systems by just allowing you to directly convert it but i mean you know for some people that also it's it's kind of weird i don't know of any other game that's gone quite as far as it has in that direction to try and simplify all those systems but yeah you just like directly pick things that you want um right when you're picking it up which is Kind of weird, interesting. It could be a good thing, but I don't know. Uh, currently, Ultimate Adam has seems to have a fair number of design issues. But anyway, all right. Chat is very green. Okay, so let's get back to what we're actually playing here. Um, sell items. Um, anyway, I don't really want his service right now. Crafting? What does crafting do for us? Ah, oh, crafting is an upgrade. Ooh, upgrade Ring of War. So... I was talking earlier about the ground gives way having a lot of item interactions and items turning into other items. And there's a whole bunch of mechanisms for that, like environmental. So there's um, some items that interact with other items. There's also environmental interactions, a, a lot more a lot of those uh, items uh, inter changing because of the environment. Um, and then there's also the other option is through NPCs, you can upgrade your stuff, which gives you, which is kind of like the only ways to get certain items, I think, in, in a lot of cases is to pay people to upgrade them. And, and some things can be upgraded more than once and get even cooler. And there's some really neat stuff apparently, but it can get really expensive. We are pretty poor right now. <laughs> um, but you can see what else they do here. So the Ring of War can be upgraded to the Ring of Blood, makes your blood boil with rage. I guess that gives us this new aggression stat or whatever, which has some other side effects. To be honest, I'm not sure because aggression was not something that existed back when I was playing the game. So I don't actually know what it does yet. Um, but it does seem like an interesting balancing mechanic. Ring of Pacifist and helps you focus on using your weapon to block. Hmm. Anyway. Uh, oh, actually, also it shows us over there what it does too. Um, hmm. Bloodlust. 0% bloodlust, 15% bloodlust. I'm not quite sure what the bloodlust effect does. We can check. I can't actually press it. Oh. Oh, that is the stats. No. Huh. Pressing X doesn't actually do anything here, but it says it does something in the actions list. Anyway, Ring of Peace. Anyway, now I'm actually looking at the list there. Oh, so it just, yeah, lowers many. Anyway, these, these don't seem like something I actually necessarily want anyway. Hmm. Anyway, just looking at what they can... Uh, work on here it gets me really sleepy. yeah sorry past couple nights haven't been getting full rest i was gonna take a break actually for about 15 minutes ago but ended up powering through i should probably take a, a few minutes break um let me see uh sell items services crafting all right so yeah we now look at the sell items list all right so the only thing we have we can sell which is not attached it, sorry not equipped <laughs> gotta correct myself all right Monk ring. We can sell a monk ring for 34 gold, huh? Yeah, so I can see how this could totally be, um, yeah, optimal selling by going and running back and forth to different places in, <laughs> that you know to be safe um, in the dungeon. 
just to get stuff that was left on the ground to sell. But that 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 said, isn't that that new like alien mechanic or whatever from le- leaving stuff around or whatever? Is that only when you rest? Either way, it's not gonna uh, affect that. Those guys didn't exist back when I played either, and I'm not even sure exactly the details about them. But anyway, I'm gonna sell. You have nothing more I want to buy. Good. Okay, we are gonna we're done with Bert the Lord. Um, yeah, Runia. Uh, the Grand Gizway has everything. There's aliens too. Hey, Luigi, welcome to the stream. Kids know the auth chips are killing it. Yeah, I've, I've been doing some good auth chip work though lately. The past couple of days, I've seen auth chips actually coming to life, and eventually coming to Cogmind as well. Um, all right, so yeah, I because I, I want I'm gonna stream a little longer today than usual, so I'm gonna take a quick break for a couple minutes here and get refreshed real quick and uh we're gonna continue on uh longer with the same run uh one second here got place my troubler message there All right, we are back. Yeah, the water is refreshing and it cools you down. Yes, um, <clears throat> definitely more fresh. Had to get up, stretch a bit, grab some water, eat a couple pieces of chocolate. Now I'm awake again. <laughs> All right, let us continue here. Um, Bert the Lord selling us his jewelry here. Why? Wait, why are we a little different color here? Because I don't have my, yeah, I have to get my window in focus here. Okay, window back in focus. <clears throat> so welcome back, Vectus. <laughs> Chat, everyone. Let us continue exploring. The ground gives way. I gotta remember, we're still flying too. We've got these nice winged boots on. Ooh, a valve. Uh-oh. <laughs> Do we want to flood Bert the Lord? There's a valve here. 
Um, hmm. Kill the jeweler, trust me. Luigi, have you ever played The Ground Gives Way? <laughs> Do the flood. Hey, we can actually fly, so we're not afraid of flooding. Uh, Bert the jeweler might be afraid of flooding. <laughs> Uh, we're gonna look around before I do the valve, I think, probably. Should I? Oh, there's noise. I'm gonna do the valve. <laughs> turn, using two EP. Uh, yes. You turn the valve with great effort. You hear rushing water. All right. Good thing we can fly. Uh, we have... You hear rushing water. All right, anyway, there was some noise. Uh, I wonder what the valve did. There's the noise. It's moving. It's very noisy, whatever it is. Is it stuck? Is something stuck behind a door? Are we? Are we? Like, did we flood something that can't open doors? All right. Yeah, it's just something stuck in there. I'm gonna go out this door. Found the stairs down. Also, there's an arrow slit to the south. We can glance through that. We can't glance through an arrow slit very far. <laughs> oh, our vision sucks. Skeleton. Unaware of you. Uh, permanent immunity to arrows. Oh, that's cool. Skeletons are immune to arrows. <laughs> Makes a lot of sense. Um, permanent shield pummel, hmm. throw bone, what else does this guy have? Oh, all right, nothing we need to scroll for. He's got a long sword too, and he's got eight hit points. Wow, this guy's pretty tough. Vision four, noise seven, hmm, anyway. Hmm, wonder if it's worth going after him. It would help to know if there was treasure over there. Make friends with this one? <laughs> oh, shoot. Draining eye. We've now drained to zero MP and nine max hit points. Wait, if we lose, if we go down to nine max as a temporary thing, okay, I guess that doesn't matter as long as we rest, so it's okay. That's bad, actually. In fact, we kind of need to rest now. Hmm. Here comes something slow around the corner. Uh, I can't actually tell what it is. Hmm. Also, I wonder what that water did. I have no way to heal except for resting, which is kind of bad. Now I'm also thinking I probably should have coated my longsword with the poison. It would make things run away because it would give them disease. Not, that might not always be a good thing, actually. Because sometimes you'd prefer to just kill things rather than have them run away so that they can get healed up again. Does this game warn you before you drink questionable liquids? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. I don't recall. I mean, it probably does. Makes sense. It's ruining it about everything else, so it would be in line with its other uh, QOL. It would be awkward if not. Yeah, and Youngster says, yeah, Youngster was playing nice uh, after the last stream for the first time. All right, let's see. Um, hmm. It's not going to be useful against them anyway, so. Coat weapon. I'm trying. I'm currently thinking of just like uh, going downstairs to get a rest. Oh shoot! Okay, maybe that's a bad idea. I'm gonna go this way. Whatever that is, it just opened a door. <laughs> this thing to our east can open doors. It's not faster than us.
Let's see. Low on resources. Wait, what? Oh, shoot. Seriously? That's a mechanic? These are too complicated to climb when in combat? Oh my gosh, I didn't notice that. There's a difference between... I was wondering where the twisty came from and what that might mean. Um, now it actually does have an effect. Oops, this is a bad time to learn this effect. <laughs> I did not realize this. Because it would be fine to go upstairs. Oh my gosh. The, the tutorial does not have twisty stairs. Uh, I probably should. Yeah, that makes sense. Cause, hmm. and I mean, I guess it's a mistake you you learn. Uh, you do you you do once because you learn this <laughs> being a thing. Did not realize there is a difference. I mean, I knew I I was curious what was different about them because I noticed some of the stairs are saying twisty and some don't. But I didn't realize this would be the effect. Ah, shoot, I'm gonna die here. Probably. Hmm. Magic trap is kind of pointless. Hmm. No, I, I'm. Yeah, I, that's right. Rift Wizard and Jupiter Hell. <laughs> Rift Wizard win in one run. Jupiter Hell win in one run. The Grand goes right? No. <laughs> LOL, no. Yeah, for sure. I expect to actually do a lot of runs and die a lot today. But I'm playing the first run a lot slower because there's a lot of new mechanics and things that I'm kind of getting the hang of. So I ended up not playing a bunch of runs today. But I imagine I'll be playing some more slightly faster uh, in the future. Um, uh, all right. Anyway, uh, but yeah, it's been going uh, surprisingly slow. All right, I think the Saint <laughs> Luigi. Just, what are you talking about? <laughs> Kite shield on block every hit? Yeah, really. Oh, actually, that's right. I forgot I didn't put the kite shield on. Um, yeah, that actually would help here. And it would also give us some extra HP. Do I have... I have enough EP to use it, too. Whew. Yeah, that's probably the best move here. I don't know what's coming for us, but let's... Uh, we're going to attach a, uh, a kite shield. Attach. I'm going to correct myself for the 15th time. We're going to... <laughs> Equip this rusty kite shield to give us even more block. Um, why is our, our our armor is currently at fifty percent? What is doing that to our armor here? Temp effect was the part of the drain effect, I guess. Oh no, it was exhausted. No, no, that was already like that before, though. I'm not sure what that what did that, but it might have been the temporary effect of being hit. Martial combo splash by acid. Uh, technically, we can get energy back if we wanted it. Oh, no, we can't actually do that. No, yeah, we, we can. Um, Splash by acid. When did that happen? Uh, oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, we, wait, was that from the eye? What the heck was that? Who did that? How did we get splash from acid? Acid blob. Oh. oh, that was when I went down the stairs real quick. That's what happened right just now. I went downstairs and got splashed by a friggin' acid blob <laughs> and then i immediately walked back up like i didn't even wait a second there i just immediately jumped back up the stairs because the whole point of going down the stairs there was to be able to avoid combat and rest because i needed rest as soon as possible and there was just another enemy down there so yeah that happened it happened in like a split second all right i think we're ready to take on whatever this is or as ready as we'll ever be um whatever it is probably going to kill us though I can't. All right, here we go. It's a druid. Mainly 95%. Block 20%. It can heal an ally. It can summon monsters. Oh, no. <laughs> The druid itself is not too bad. The fact that it can also summon things seems kind of bad. Oh, shoot. 
<laughs> the druid says, you think you look handsome in those heavy gauntlets? Who's here for your apples? I don't have any more apples. Do I? No, I have pieces of bread, right? If it's a melee monster, this could be fine. Yeah, it, well, it sort of is. It used heal ally. I should have attacked it. I was, I, w I didn't want to approach it because then it'll get the first hit on me. But I also don't want to just wait here until it summons something. So I guess I'm going to attack. Two hit points left. He's at six. Oh my god. It's one hit point versus two hit points. He dies if we get this hit out. <laughs> Druid is dead. 50% armor doing nothing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Damn. That was, that was pretty nasty. All right, let me get the hell out of here. <laughs> that was so close. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Uh, I guess I don't have to go up the stairs if I want. I could rest here. But I don't know. Maybe I should go upstairs and go back to the other food to rest. Eh, no, it's not going to matter. Maybe I did rest here. So, yeah, that was really close. Clutch shield. I guess the shield may probably help there. Um, actually, I didn't actually read the effects. I just want to see whether I was hit or not. <laughs> All right, wait, is there anything? All right, we're EP is now zero. We can't use that. Um, Being tanky can be good. Again, as GJ was saying there, it's if it was a melee enemy. If it was anything else, we probably would have been annihilated. We were, were specifically built against fighting stuff like that. Fortunately, they didn't summon anything. That's what I was really worried about. All right, see you later, Salamander. <laughs> uh, your two pieces of bread may go bad. Um, hmm. All right, I'm going to actually eat one of them. And that energizes us to do... Something actually, can we? Is there a vein nearby? No, we can see our jewelry friend. Yeah, later, Salamander. Um, sensor requires five. Not that I was going to use it anyway. This is also five. Shoot. Yeah. I'm just going to eat both of them then. Then I can identify something. And not that it's something that's going to help a whole lot, but hmm. Just going to identify the wand. Enhanced vision can be used once per day. Per day, uh, 2 MP. Uh, vision plus 2. Hmm, that could be pretty cool. Uh, I think we have a max. We have 2 when we're not temporarily... Screwed. We can use that to counteract the effect of our uh, our helmet, which is nice. Uh, the pacing reminds you of Dark Souls, very slow and methodical. Oh, uh, that's that's um, that's the that's my pacing, I guess you could say. <laughs> All right. Um. Time to do our resting then. Back down to one EP, rest. Do you want to rest? Yes, what's gonna happen? Did anything happen? Nothing happened? Nothing at all? <laughs> How surprising. I've had some bad effects happen. Um, wow, we're, we're back. We're back in action, full HP. Uh, our MP is indeed still zero. Um, oh, that's right, we have minus nine on that. So we're not gonna be able to use, unfortunately, the vision Thing, unless we actually pulled off something that's totally destroying our uh, min minus MP. There it is. The kite shield. That's what did it. That's the big one. Kite shield's five alone. Um, well, we would still only have uh, one left after that. <laughs> Definitely not a magic user. Yeah. Yeah. Not true with the shield. Exactly. Oh, you're gonna say if you unequip the sword, you can cast a vision and it won't go away when you attach it again. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good point. Yeah, you can if you're willing to do that. If you're willing to spend some EP to take off your stuff and um, cast and then put it back on, that can actually work for you. But um, yeah, that's if you want to 
put that into it. I do kind of, our vision really sucks, that's for sure. <laughs> that makes things rather hard. We're kind of playing, I don't know, I feel it's a little bit of a, a harder mode here, if only because uh, Intel is quite important, right? All right, so you know what we need to do now is go back upstairs and get our, we need to go back and get the food. But later, I don't want to go too far without it. Bottle of milk, piece of bread. All right, now we got our extra, extra food supplies for later if I need some, whoa, what? An alien, huh. he's fleeing. Oh, so this is a, so this is a new, oh, he's carrying an iron, a rusty iron sword. <laughs> sword spear. That's the spear I dropped earlier. So this, all right, seven out of seven. So you can kill these guys, huh? Phase out, they can tell up, they can blink, phase out, instant phase out. Huh. What does that do? Just make you completely unattackable and, and but not necessarily invisible or what? Also electricity. Range magic attack target you. <laughs> so aliens are something that didn't exist back when I was playing the game, but I my uh, I recall reading about um, them being something that basically they they kind of lower the the tedium of playing the game by these guys come after items that you leave on the ground. Radius two feels very claustrophobic for sure. Yeah, they're kind of like the recyclers uh, of the ground gives way. Because otherwise, you know, you can backtrack as far as you want, um, as long as you know it's safe too. Then it's always something you can do. So you can kind of have a stash, and having a stash is kind of a a weird meta gaming thing in roguelikes. That it's kind of nice to work against it um, to 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 not make that a thing. Um, they're called aliens because recyclers are from Tau City Four. <laughs> phases out of this dimension. So does phase out basically mean they just leave permanently? That's just basically them permanently disappearing. Uh, and they've taken the item with them. Anyway, I don't, I don't care about the item. I, I knew this was kind of a mechanic that existed that to uh, prevent uh, stash building, which is good. It's, uh, I like it. Obviously, it's a weird thing to do, but this is the ground gives way. And, you know, game's weird. So <laughs> um, anyway, there's the alien doing his thing. Wait. Also, there's a fire trap. Wait a minute. Why is there a fire trap on the ground here just in the open? Did the alien, like, pick, pull it out of the ground or something? That that was a trap there before. Or did he run over it? Did someone run over it? Anyway, does fire damage instantly. Hey, that's kind of neat. That could even be useful. You can also disassemble a fire trap for 3 EP. I wonder what you get out of disassembling a fire trap, just in case of having another source for items. Uh, if you kill it, you get the item back, but the alien can disappear forever. Yeah. Yeah, I figured you can get it back. I mean, not that I need it back, but um, also there's a door here I didn't check before, huh? All right. There's a potion here. Oh, no. It's a bottle of milk. Sure. Phase out sort of exists to counteract these guys. Oh, using these guys as a fox inventory instead of floor. Oh, what? They, so the alien still runs around normally otherwise? I mean, that's that's obviously weird. Yeah, I would have expected them. I've, I thought that like the aliens would just kind of like grab the stuff, run to an exit. And just basically, as you once you stop chasing them and can't see them anymore, then they just disappear rather than phasing or whatever. Lukewarm floor milk. <laughs> yeah, where, where's our refrigerated milk? Is this trap still here? It is. We're still flying. All right. Now we can go down the twisty stairs. Open this door again. Back to the east, I guess. Pasteurize the milk in the lava, <laughs> like vaporize. All right, something in that room wants out. Shallow water. Also, we didn't ever find out what that valve did, which is to the northwest of us. <laughs> of the milk fields. <laughs> Sack of coins. We found 25 gold. We found a useless shattered shield. 
whatever's inside here really wants out. This is a bad place for us to fight. So like previously, when I was playing The Ground Gives Way, the, like you could carry multiple weapons and just use whatever weapon was most ideal for a given situation. Obviously that really changes now. Uh, with the EP limitation, like you know, like right now in a quarter, you could close switch to a close melee weapon and then fight more effectively, and then switch back. Um, so it's a pretty interesting resource. But uh, uh, that plus the identification game and enemies that only do EP damage, so it's neat stuff. All right. Mm. The door was booby trapped. An alarm trap is tripled, triggered. Okay, at least it wasn't something else, but there's something bad in here. Oh, shoot. <laughs> A great water elemental. Uh oh, I think now we're getting into dangerous stuff. Causes instant fatigue, knock back with a strong wave. Um, I think we're gonna die. <laughs> that was a bad bell valve. <laughs> yeah, it was a bad valve. Can I touch the wall behind me to close the door in front of me? <laughs> uh, shoot. Capital letter equals death. Yeah, these guys, uh, especially this early, even later on, I mean, elementals are really bad in this game. Like, really bad, and we're not even that far in the game yet. Nice valve, huh? <laughs> uh, hmm. Too bad I can't close the door, though. This guy can't actually use doors. Hmm. Wait, what else can we cast? He's only casts attacking spells. Rust touch. Oh my gosh, he rusts iron too. Any way to boil the water? <laughs> hmm. Oh, well technically his attack. Oh no, here you go. There's another attack. Five MP. It does two damage, three fatigue, and two knockback. Oh my gosh, this guy's insane. Um, shoot. Hey Marlin, welcome. You like the font, eh? Yes. For several times over stream, I've had to recall, or uh, we can't, but it's a uh, proggy small. Um, no, we can't <laughs> repeat. Um, proggy small, it's a nice font. Normally meant to be used in a very small size, actually, for programming. Uh, but when blown up like this, it looks really cool, I think. But yeah, it's meant to be actually, it's a, it's a really tiny font that's also clear when it's small. So... Yeah, good for like, it's a, like I said, it's a, it's a programming uh, font people are using their ID. Okay, so anyway, I'm tempted to move to the east and try to close the door on him. I hope that he does some kind of ranged attack on me. But can you attack ranged diagonally around a corner like that? If not, then that's impossible anyway. And even his attacks tend to push you back anyway. So he's probably just going to push me further down the corridor where I wouldn't be, or somewhere where I wouldn't be able to close the doors effectively. And then we lose our 10% melee bonus, which is the main reason to stay here without moving anywhere. But also, he's going to give, a, he's going to move us anyway, probably. With knockback, which means we're probably going to lose it. All right, I'm going to go east. Hmm. <laughs> I got pushed back in the other direction. <laughs> you fly like a leaf in the wind. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, my goal there was to try and get, just run fast enough that I could get to the other side of the door. Yeah, he's like, get over here. <laughs> Your full helmet has rusted. Wonderful. 
He used Rust Touch. This is bad. There's something odd about this knockback. Yes, the knockback in this case, it's doubled. This guy's gonna crush us. Our longsword just rusted. Now we have a rusty longsword. This guy's gonna annihilate us. Fine, no. How many hit points does he have left? Five left. He failed to use strong wave, which is kind of funny. Twice. You fly like a leaf in the wind. All right, now, hey, he's actually really hurt. I hurt him a lot, but uh, I don't think it's supposed to pull you. Now, it makes you go randomly, uh, Jack-9. I'm not sure exactly how the uh, GJ was talking about it. Your flail does double damage now, right? Oh, yeah, our flail could uh, do better. Our um. Um, yeah, we could increase our damage with that. Of course, it's that's true because oh, this one's rusted permanently. Yeah, right. Flail. Hmm. I don't know. I'm actually tempted to kill this guy now. He can't rust our flail any more than it's already rusted. <laughs> he. But we now have an opportunity to close the door, which is what I was trying to get to, is to get back where I could close the door. But now... I think if we, if we leave him alive here, it'd become a problem. He could become a problem later. Hmm. I didn't see how much his hit points got down to, though. I didn't actually count. Did anyone check that? Uh, I could, I'd have to go back through the messages. Five out of eight. He's got five left still, really? We didn't do any more than that. Greater element is damaged. He's at four. He's down to half life. Yeah. I knew we got him at least down to five, but yeah, I hit him for two in that one shot earlier on. Oh, that was because our, that's right. It's because he rusted our sword, which is doing less damage. Uh, so right now, if we switch to the flail, which is already rusted, two more hits will kill him. That's not too bad. We shouldn't die. He's, of course, he's going to keep knocking us around and probably knock our EP down. Oh, that's the thing too. Once he knocks our EP down, then he's going to start really doing even more damage to us. Uh, what does Chad think? Uh, do we want to f close the door or just finish this guy off? Might be worth finishing him off. I think the longer term strategy might be important to finish him off because if we just lock him behind there and close the door and go, technically later we got to come back through this way. We're going to die anyway, but <laughs> what I mean is it, we're not going to make it to the end of the game and have to go back to the surface. Because once you go to the end, you have to bring the item at the end of the game back to the surface, which means you have to come back through all this. This elemental doesn't regen health, by the way. Oh, he doesn't? Why not? Some enemies just don't regen? Or is that on their list? I guess that's on their list of stats. Not a living creature. Oh, so only living creatures do. Huh, well, that's interesting. Mm. You didn't know that either, Vectus? <laughs> huh. Yeah, I just assumed that all creatures were restored afterwards. But, oh, an elemental doesn't, eh? Hmm. It's very tempting to kill him right now. Plus, if you kill him, the advantage is I can check out what's in that room over there. The room that we flooded. I uh, I wonder if he was... Did he come because of the valve <laughs> that flooded the room? Uh, and I wonder what it would look, look like in there before you did that. The other option is to just close the door and leave him here. Using the flail now is going to be kind of insane to you. We're already noisy enough as is. Probably came because of the valve. Mm. I wonder if that actually gave us anything. All right. Well, we're gonna we're gonna fight him. Gonna switch to our uh, flail here. Mm. What else is that gonna do? It'll drop our block. Or maybe we'll go up though. Noise is gonna go crazy. Uh, but we'll get our damage back. It'll take two hits. Again, uh, with the screen switch, not really necessary. The main thing I'm worried about is him hitting us from a great distance. Which might happen. Oh shoot. 
Just got slammed into the stone wall. <laughs> he used Rust's touch. Luckily, you don't wear anything that can rust. Yeah, because we're already rusted to hell. All right, I thought he was going to come around the corner, but he actually used uh, his ability uh, from around the corner, which is bad. Great. Slammed into a stone wall and damaged. All right, now actually maybe I should have run. Whoa, your block breaks your rusty kite shield. This guy needs to die. Oh my god, I haven't even hurt him yet. Two damage. Oh, we're dead. Almost. Almost. That was so close. I screwed that up. I, I waited for him around a corner. I wasted a turn of waiting. That's too bad. <laughs> Elemental is a hypervelocity linear accelerator. Yeah. Mm. Well, I had a chance to get away and I didn't use it. The main reason being we're close to the end of stream time anyway, so I decided to risk it. And this could be the end of a run. So I can start a fresh one next time. But yeah, if I was trying not to, uh, if I was trying to make sure we could get to the end, I would have uh, just closed the door and come back later and maybe we had a better situation. Because we're already on the proper side where the exit is anyway. Mm. Oh, so one advantage, oh, we could drink a bottle of milk. I'm gonna drink a bottle of milk. The reason I drank that is because we might it might help us survive this guy. You were knocked into the Great Water Elemental. The Great Water Elemental stands firmly, but he did knock us all the way over here. He used his strong wave. <laughs> Stop blocking my attacks, dude. Oh, got slammed against the wall again. We just missed twice. I had two chances to kill him there. All I have to do is hit him once. I hit him twice there. Got slammed into the wall. Look at our blood. It's all over the uh, the hash mark. <laughs> Damn it. So close. I can't drink another bottle of milk. The only reason we're alive is because I drank a bottle of milk and charged the element. <laughs> Otherwise, he would have already killed us. That almost worked, though. That almost worked. Because he only, he's, uh, wait a minute, where is he now? Oh, there he is dead now dead dead that was so close i really uh, that would have been cool if i killed him that's okay we, we did come down to uh uh the final hit once before on this run that there i hit him i had him i hit him twice uh i drank the bot at least i drank the bottle i thought because a lot of his uh, damage is from ep so and we can get a lot of that by chugging some milk so chug the milk charge him we get two extra hits Part of it is also he, uh, again, did knock back, and that one drew us at him, and he slammed right into him. Two attempts. Almost. Almost. So, anyway, yeah, that's good. Plan to, uh, oh, so we can start a, a fresh run next time. But, yeah, I'm going to continue streaming The Ground Gives Way. We've only just started. Um, I've been looking forward to playing for a long time, and we're finally getting back into it. So, uh, yeah, it'll be fun times. Um, I'm going to get to see... I'll go, oh no, get used to these new mechanics and get to try out some different kinds of builds and just see what we find, you know, build around different things. But uh, this was the heavy armored, uh, simply sees hydrating, water bag. <laughs> yeah. Knockback, troll death. Uh huh. Nice see where you get your inspiration from. <laughs> My inspiration. Knockback wasn't even a thing back when I was playing The Ground Gives Way, actually. That's a new mechanic, too. Um, there's so many new mechanics in the game and it was already so full of stuff, but previously it was hyper-focused around items, um, and, you know, item interactions and stuff like that. But now there's also a lot of new mechanics surrounding, uh, combat and tactics, uh, which has certainly changed, um, changed up the calculus. It's, uh, it's certainly gotten more interesting even. It was already interesting enough, but yeah, neat stuff. Hey, race. Yeah. Stream's about to end. We've been been at it for a good four and a half hours too, too late uh, we'll be back next week uh the there's also the the video will be on twitch and uh youtube tomorrow plus uh but yeah i did a lot of uh the background stuff at the beginning of the stream and we spent an hour on the tutorial going through all the details and talking about some of the stuff uh related to the mechanics and yep that's the end of our first run right there um we can go through the menus and look at stuff now also it just we made it i guess it looks like we made it about halfway i dropped down to this level really quick 
and just got slimed and jumped back up. That was an attempt to escape. And then, anyway, we did manage to survive until I opened that door to see what was behind that wall. We had a lot of HP, but oh my god. <laughs> a greater water elemental in the mid-game? Yeah, no. <laughs> Overall, pretty good, though, and a pretty interesting run, I think. And now familiar with the mechanics. Um, cool stuff. And also, the fact, now that we're not in the middle of a run, maybe I can do some, have some fun doing some runs on my own uh, before the next stream. Uh, which will be uh, next week, as usual. I have, as I'm pretty sure. So we'll uh, let's see. Um, yeah, so maybe I'll, I'll get more familiar with some of the different interactions and can start to play a little faster as well and talk about some other stuff. We'll see if I have time uh, to do that. But yeah, having my own, uh, I'm also pleased with the uh, font today. Um, good stuff. Don't forget to read the manual in the meantime. Yeah, that's a good idea. Do idea. I should write that down also. I will write that down because I should peruse the manual now that I've uh, gone through the tutorial and we've done all the intro stuff anyway. So I've come at, t I've come at the game from a fresh perspective again. So I, I know uh, BTS will check it out later and maybe get some other insights or, or useful stuff there. But uh, yeah, so that is The Ground Gives Way. Um, if you haven't seen the game before, there's a link in chat. And yeah, that's uh, that's about it. Then we'll do another one. Or we'll do some more runs uh, in the future. I've only just started, uh, and I will be working on Cogmind uh, for the next uh, week. I'll be doing the next fabrication update. We're doing an experiment with auth chips, so that will probably not take too long to finish up. But here is a piece of interesting information. I might be adding a new type of map to Cogmind um, uh, that I've been thinking about for the past few days. Something, yeah, related to fabrication and stuff. Uh, botnet good. Yes, Vectus with the most important night bot command. <laughs> we gotta make, we gotta force MTF to use that command somehow. <laughs> just, just don't tell him what it does. When he shows up one day next time, just tell him to type, uh, exclamation mark botnet in the chat right don't and we won't rem tell them that there's new commands or anything <laughs> anyway but yes you gotta summon you guys gotta find a way to trick mtf into doing that vectus has got it you, i'm sure you, i'm sure you can manage this vectus <laughs> don't show our hand <laughs> uh, so many good quotes there <laughs> Uh, anyway, so yeah, I like this feature in uh, The Ground Gives Way too. Um, looking back through stuff, this is really useful for looking through previous floors. View map also shows your memory. Um, hmm. Neat stuff. I'll be honest, this is a tall order, but if you believe in me, I'll share it. <laughs> yeah, it, it, the thing is, you can't, you can't make it, it's going to be really hard to not make it obvious. MTF will, uh, uh, you know, he's going to guess there's something up and figure out kind of what it is. But <laughs> uh, anyway, what else? So what if we press escape? What happens? Escape, escape. Yeah, you can just kind of like stay in here and look at what happened. I can't. Oh, I see. If you press move, it like shows the next turn or whatever. See, we got him down to two hit points with literally just if either of my attack attempts had hit him the last two, he'd be dead right now. That would have been pretty awesome to take out a greater water elemental here. But this guy's, yeah, this guy's really tough for mid game. Uh, it almost worked. Almost. But if we wait here, is he going to do anything? No, he stopped doing anything. He's just sitting around. He's just standing there. Sometimes enemies will do other things after you're dead. Hold down the space button. Yeah, I was I was actually holding down space. He's not doing anything. He's just sitting there. Hmm. If you hold down space, though, it does pass time even after you're dead, and other and monsters can walk around and do other stuff too. Um, like some of the monsters will come and mess with your body and whatever. That's always it was a funny thing because different and different enemies will do different things to you <laughs> after you're dead. Uh, so I guess we'll see that at, at one other point. All right. Okay. So yeah, anyway, uh, thanks for, uh, everyone for showing up to my first ground gives way stream. I imagine this will also get some more people 
aware of and or interested in the game. I uh, tend to when I start when I stream for the first time a game, I post about it in more places and uh, to get get people finding new roguelikes. So yeah, good uh, good stuff. Um, hope, we'll see uh, <clears throat> how many people over the next week start to die and the ground gives way. Just like I did. I, I did not at all expect to win this, though, that's for sure. This is quite on a different level than Rift Wizard and Jupiter L. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so thanks, everyone, for stopping by. And I will be back in the Discord as usual. The link is in the chat. If you haven't been there before, we've got the Roguelikes and Cogwine Discord, where there's all kinds of Roguelikes, including the, a channel specifically for The Ground Gives Way, where you can find a bunch of other players who... Share tips and stories uh, for that and so many other roguelikes. <laughs> Youngster says, thanks, you got me playing the Grand Gives Way. Yeah, same thing with the previous games I've been streaming. I've been getting a, a number of people into each of them. So it's good to, good to be able to do that in between my Cogmine runs now. Um, but yeah, I'm glad to have finally started streaming the Grand Gives Way. We will get back to this. Uh, uh, more more Grand Gives Way runs next week. See what other kinds of crazy stuff we can find. Uh, until next time.